All right, hi everybody, welcome. This is Feature Bootcamp. This is the eight week course that's going to take you from idea to finished draft um, of a brand new feature film. So my name is Connor. I'm the instructor here who runs uh, the boot camps um, on our, that are currently running on our weekends, though we have some other different boot camps that we've um, had other instructors for in the past. Um, let's look at some tips for what to do if you cannot see, or I'm sorry, you can't hear or be heard. Um, you might just need to look at this icon in the bottom left of your screen that looks like a microphone, the gray microphone in the bottom left that indicates that you're muted. So you might need to just click that if I call on you and you, if you're realizing no one can hear me, that might be why. Um, push to talk would be the other thing to look at. So go to the gear icon and go to voice and video and just make sure that it's set to uh, voice activity instead of push to talk. Okay, so what is script camp? Um, you are here, so you've clearly found us. Or maybe you're watching on one of our different platforms, like I mentioned, like Twitch and Twitter or YouTube. So thanks for watching along regardless. But this is going to be this is a uh, screenwriting community that is centered in Discord, which is um, where you can you can join Discord, make an account and participate in our live classes if you want to. Or you can just leave comments on the um, stream that you're watching and we should be able to get them on here. Uh, so we are um, a community that is focused on taking you from first draft to more polished script. We have lots of free classes and events and workshops and some paid ones as well. We have boot camps, for instance, being our most popular paid class that focus on step by step, basically, for the feature class. This is the, the backbone of this entire uh, community here, this feature course that is like how to write a movie step by step, one thing at a time. One, it's like how to write a movie one on one. Um, we also have TV Pilot Bootcamp, um, and uh, that is on Sundays. And we have a rewrite bootcamp that we are um, starting a new session for soon as well. So we'll, we'll show you a big list of everything coming up, but um, we do many different classes related to writing scripts. My name is Connor, so I have been doing this um, professionally in, in Hollywood since 2017 when I got signed for the first time after placing in the Launchpad Top 10. Since then, I've been Nickel Quarter Finalist, Nickel Semi Finalist, and I have a script set up at a production company in town currently. So I, um, I teach our boot camps and sometimes the weekday classes too. Like this last week, we had this um, super fun class on uh, mystery, mystery genre. So sometimes I'll come for special one-off classes. Um, boot camps, these will use this two hour weekly meeting um, or these two hour weekly meetings for eight weeks using my very methodical step-by-step -step, um, sort of routine. And we have many different types of stuff that you can take the boot camp for. And uh, you can always review our video recordings of these previous sessions if you just d weren't, aren't unable to come to one of these live. But we're just concluding a horror thriller boot camp, which finishes tomorrow. Um, and then uh, you can you can use our video library uh, to access the other ones if it's just a previous course that is not currently ongoing. So uh, let's look at the schedule for this boot camp right now. We're on week zero because this is the free intro. This is going to be on premise and logline and just some some of the basics of writing movies and um, what that means and how to do that and all the basics that you need to know. Um, and we're going to be refining what we call log lines this class. And by the end of this class, you're going to try to improve as much as possible this one sentence that expresses what is my movie about. You're going to be trying to decide on an idea and really, really, really settle on an idea by next week. Um, the sooner you settle on the idea that you want to be writing for the course, the better, because then you will just have more time to get that research and pre-writing and outlining done and, uh, without having to worry about, oh, is the, am I sure I want to do this? Or maybe I want to do something else. So try to decide sooner rather than later. And this course is a good place to pick ideas that you're like, well, that would never get made. Um, or maybe that's some idea that you uh, you think it's funny or, or interesting, but you never thought you'd actually write it. Like this course is actually a good place to do those ideas as opposed to the ones that you have been working on for a really long time. But we'll get into that in the ground rules. Mostly this is to learn how to get better at writing scripts. The goal of this is not to give you an amazing script because if you're newer at this, it's probably not going to be great. And if it's your first draft, it's probably not going to be great. And this is if it's both of those are the case, then it's certainly not going to be great. But that's okay. Um, the goal is to improve. This is like the gym that you go to to do the you know bicep lifts or curls or whatever, and that you just improve your skills more than you're trying to get a tangible physical thing out of this. So let's look at um, the following weeks. Week one is on. Um, we're trying to figure out the basics of why we're doing this story and, and how to fill out our sketchbook, which is this unsorted kind of collage of all of our information that we've gotten from research, all of our ideas that we have for characters and locations and lines, and anything else that we just think should maybe be in the movie, but we don't know how it'll fit in yet. That is a document that we can actually be starting today. So in a couple slides, we'll get to this document that, or this slide called Make Your Sketchbook Now, and you can just be working on that throughout class. But basically, you're going to be putting all of your, um, it's like a scrapbook of all of your inspirations and ideas for you, this project. No wrong answers of things to include. 
and we're also going to be just trying to get a really solid log line, which it's one sentence, but it's harder than it might seem. It's deceptively difficult um, to come out with a really good log line because the words that you use have to be chosen so carefully. So we'll look at um, how to just come up with a good idea for a movie today, the kinds of things that we're looking for, and how to actually express those as a single sentence that suggests a high concept, compelling uh, feature work. <clears throat> So next week, um, we will uh, be doing that. Then week two is on outlining. The broad strokes start with this, what we call the story beat summary, which is like a really bird's eye view overview of everything in the script. It's the order of events. It doesn't have to include every single scene, but it's like the major points nailed down. The week after that is on scene cards, which is where you expand that previous outline into a full paragraph for every single scene. So you're going to know what's going to happen on every page of the script before you start. That's when the real work sort of begins, even though you're not writing pages, you are uh, really, really, really heavily outlining using this method to make sure we know what's going to be on every page. Then we actually start the script in week four, which is on the we're going to be on beginnings, and each subsequent week is going to focus on whatever section of the script that you currently are pretty much supposed to be on. If you're writing 20 to 25 pages a week, then you'll probably keep up with the class. So the first half is all outlining, the second half is all writing the script. So that's we we really spend the first half on outlining to make sure that we are not lost in the woods when you get to the actual pages and you know where things are supposed to be and you have a very efficient map from beat to beat um so yeah second second half of class is all on writing the script beginnings transitions second act escalation third act and um then your first draft will be complete by august 19th um because you have up until the you know the week that follows our final class meeting so that's actually that gives you about uh nine ten weeks um from this day to finish a new feature film or perhaps your first ever script um, if you want extra feedback, you can always uh, post your pilots in our different chat channels. Our pilots are features in different chat channels on our server, like feature, features, pilot scripts. That channel, it will, it will, you will, you will get the best results and the, the best, um, you know, bang for your buck if you are swapping with someone or if you are giving feedback to other people as well. That way, you can also earn what we call script coins on our server. You get them just by participating and just by attending classes and giving feedback. You get little coins that you can spend on like little silly Chuck E. Cheese type merchandise that has our logo on it, or you can spend them on membership or on a table read or things like that. So you can submit to uh, table reads, which are on Sundays, script swaps, which are on Tuesdays. Uh, we have Writer's Lab, which is on Saturdays, and that is where you can come with up to five pages of something that you're working on and just get individual help um, and any topics or questions that you want to hear more about. Um, we write boot camp June 25th. If you're interested, we have a form uh, that you can fill out. We can, uh, not sure, can you link the form in the chat so people can fill out for that because we're trying to determine if we have enough students to run the rewrite course at the moment. Um, so if you're interested in rewriting something, um, I usually say don't try to do two boot camps at once. Uh, so um, maybe if you're planning on doing a new feature or you want to learn how to write features, just wait a little bit before you get to the rewrite camp. And if you're new at this and maybe you've written one or two features, you probably want to take this course and not the rewrite course. The rewrite course is like a little bit more advanced. So um, probably stick with this one if you're just like, how do I write a or organize a movie? Um, you can also get me to mark up a script and give you a 30 minute call and uh, explain all the major points in it and answer any questions you have. If you go to scriptcamp.net slash coverage and our members get a huge discount off of this. So um, something to consider. So you can sign up at our website, scriptcamp.net slash classes, and you can buy this course on its own, um, which will, like we said, it's starting next week. This is the free intro. Um, or you can become an unlimited member, which means you get access to every boot camp we do, feature, TV, plays. Um, we have all kinds of classes coming up. We have a, a one-off class in graphic design coming up. We're adding more classes on prose writing and book novel writing. So um, plenty of stuff on be that is being offered here. So scriptcamp.net slash membership. You can get a two-week free trial um, and just try out everything, do uh, everything on the server. Um, and uh, I think that's it for the marketing stuff. So definitely sign up if you have not yet signed up. But thanks for being here. So who has m maybe written a script before or who has not written a script before? Maybe just tell us a little bit about what your goals or background are or um, what your experience level is, because this is open to all levels of experience, but it's a little bit easier if we know specifically most of these students have never written a script or, or have never um, heard of the hero's journey or have never you know heard of whatever method before. Or if it's like everybody here has written multiple scripts, it's just like, you know, the class is tuned slightly differently. So feel free to, to weigh in. Have you written scripts before? What are you hoping to learn or improve at in the course?
Um, hello, I've written a feature and um, a pilot and some episodes from a pilot, even though you don't have to do that. It's fun to do, and plus I'm getting ready to try and work it as a um, audio drama. So I will need, of course, more episodes. <laughs> um, I just finished um, episode four of the quote-unquote pilot, and um, I've done a pilot, some more scripts, some shorts, and a feature, and working on a feature now that I'm stuck on. So You're stuck. Another okay. feature. You're stuck like you can't get over, a, like you wrote yourself into a corner kind of thing, or maybe like you're just, you're struggling to just find the motivation for it, or how do you mean you're stuck? I'm struggling to figure out where I want to take it next I in, the, in the script, because yeah, some things have happened, and she's just sitting there going, you're stupid, you've done it again, sort of thing. Okay. So now I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, so. I see. You're not sure what should happen next in the plot, you mean? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, no problem. Yeah, people can get stuck on scripts for all kinds of reasons. Um, sometimes it's stuff that is within your control, and sometimes it's stuff that's slightly out of your control. But the only thing you can really, really, really control and before you go into actually formatting pages is really clear outlining and organization. So maybe in this class we can... Um, uh, the thing that I would focus on is if you're finding yourself not knowing what to do next in the plot in the middle of, of writing it, maybe that you need to change your outlining process and make sure that you're planning everything out really carefully before you even start putting pages together. So um, that might work for you. We'll, we'll definitely um, try to get you unstuck in this course, though. Thanks, Simone. Yes, thank you. I actually made it a um, rewrite, too. I started, <laughs> started one story with that same premise, mm -hmm. and then I did a rewrite. This is rewrite two, so <laughs> okay, yeah, very Already, common. Like almost it's kind every of a, script is going to yeah. go through like you know three to five drafts is like a, around what I say. Um, it, it's going to take to get most of them to be pretty good. Um, I usually say don't go much over four or five drafts though. That's about where it should max out. But in any case, um, sounds like you have some some good experience and maybe not haven't written a ton of features, but you've at least written one and have written some other some other things in this sort of form. So. You'll have a little bit of a head start. That's great. Joseph says, I've written scripts before, mostly within this boot camp. Um, and you can also, oh yeah, look at this. You can just click one of these little buttons to tell us, have you written a script before? A feature, pilot, short, still working, or haven't started one yet? Um, anyone else want to weigh in? Ah, uh, yes. Go ahead, Six. Hi. Um... So I haven't finished the script. I've outlined, um, have tons of ideas, read several books. Um, ultimately, I just don't feel comfortable enough or confident enough to actually finish it. I'm always second guessing it. So, um, yeah. Okay, that's yeah, that's fine. That's so you have a lot of ideas. That's one of the most important things because the. <laughs> So many of our ideas, they, you know, 99.9% .9 of scripts don't become movies or TV shows or whatever. So just being able to have lots of ideas and that you can get excited about the next one and the next one and the next one and move on to the next script and then the next script. That's also, that's all very valuable. So that's, that's all great. Um, the, in terms of just getting to the end and finishing them, I think it's going to come down. I think I just mentioned to another uh, commenter organization is going to be the main thing that's going to keep you on track and make sure that you are feeling confident enough to get through the story and execute it to the best of your ability and then move on to the next one which is always if you're the kind of person that has lots of ideas that's always maybe the most fun part is finishing something and then you'll feel good about moving on to the next thing rather than oh no i abandoned the last thing you're like it's done now we move to the next one and you make the next one even better <laughs> thanks for weighing in six um, looks like we have a few folks mm -hmm. that pressed our buttons here. Um, oh, these are they've already responded. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, sounds like um, everyone has maybe a little experience who has maybe written one or two features, perhaps. Has anyone written more than one or two features? That's okay. Um, so uh, the oh, Joseph says not multiple features, but multiple pilots. Okay, that's cool. So this course, this feature writing one is going to be like a, we, what we call it a boot camp. Um, that doesn't mean you're getting. I'm not gonna be mean to you or yell at you or call you creative insults. Um, um, I'll just think them. 
No, just kidding. But so um, the uh, the idea is that this is like how to write a movie 101. So maybe if you've written a few scripts before, but you're not totally like solid on your methods yet, then try what we're offering here. This might seem sort of difficult or against your normal process, or perhaps it might seem um, cumbersome to do this much outlining and pre-work. Can somebody who has taken my course before, or perhaps maybe even Nacho if he wants to weigh in, um, can they speak to how using this this these sort of methods they changed your approach to organizing and writing movies i'll just call on nacho go ahead nacho sure yeah so um i've written uh before i started working with connor i think i'd written about 10 scripts and i've now i wrote about five more during the past year so previously it took me about six months to a year to write each script um, I've tried lots of different outlining methods. When I first started, I didn't outline at all. I just sat down and just started writing. You know, I started in high school. I just like, ooh, I could just, you know, these Hollywood hacks, they have no clue like how to write a movie. I'm gonna show everybody, you know, I have like this vision. And, you know, I, I was really into like, I don't know, certain, just, I don't know, shaking things up and trying some cool stuff. And I made short films in school and in college. And, and I, I had a lot of ideas. But, um, you know, like, I, I'll, let's be honest, like a lot of my scripts, especially the first several scripts that I wrote, were not really that coherent story wise. Like it was just I had some cool scenes, but I had a lot of problems with like the overall story, like just making sense cinematically and, and in the con in, in the, you know, in, in the confines of a film, like, you know, what people are expecting when they go to see a film. Um, I had tried different outlining approaches. I, I used to do X cards and kind of like just, you know, arrange them on my wall. And I had like, okay, I, I felt like I had a pretty cool idea of like what the structure of a movie is. And, you know, in my work, I, I did a lot of coverage and I had to review scripts for work and stuff, read lots and lots of scripts. And I felt like I had a pretty strong idea about how to outline a movie. When I started working with Connor, um, he has this extra step, you know, beyond just basic outline where you're actually writing out a list of all the scenes in your movie and like what's happening in every scene like you know which is called the scene card stage and I really you know I almost flipped out when I saw Connor's scene cards I thought my god why the hell would anybody do this this looks insane it looks like too much work I mean why not just start writing the movie like why do I have to do this it looks boring you know and but I tried it and like the end result is like, well, you know, sooner or later you have to figure out what the hell's going on in the scene. Right. So it, I guess it, the result is that I was spending less time when I was actually writing the pages, figuring things out. Right. And already, it's not like you're, you know, you're not like, it's not locking you in stone. Like, Oh my God, I can't, you know, change anything from the scene card. You're still, you know, you're always free to come up with new ideas and new stuff, you know, but it, it really, just made my pages fly fast because I wasn't sitting around at the keyboard just trying to figure out what the hell's going on in the scene, right? I'd already figured all that out and it was work. It was really hard. It was, it's, it's probably the hardest part of writing the script. Um, but I was able to change instead of taking six months to a year to write each script, it's about maybe three to four weeks for the outlining process. And I mean, I wrote one script in a week and a half, like 10 days, I finished the whole script. Um, it had problems. It was a first draft, but you know, I, I think around two to three weeks, you know, so the eight week process really works. And I think we've had a few other students who wrote some, their first screenplays in the boot camps, And, you know, I, I wrote five since last year. Right. So I, I think uh, we have a few others who wrote a few, um, you know, repeat, uh, scripts and it's, it's fun. It's a good process. It works. It keeps you on track, you know, you know to like finish by the end of the boot camp. Thanks for that, Nacho. Yeah, so if this is all new to you, just give it a try. Maybe you think I'm kind of a more intuitive, seat of my pants kind of writer, but um, writing features professionally, you need to be able to outline, and you need to be able to write a one sheet, and a two sheet, and a three sheet, and a synopsis, and a treatment, and all these kind of pre-writing documents that if you're not able to do that, you're just not gonna really have a career. Um, those things are all necessary for you to be working with managers or producers or anyone like this who will say, show me a shorter version of that story before I can sign off on it. Because almost always we have to get other people to sign. It's not just like if you write a script, 
um, then you just send it in and someone just makes it as is. It's a constant negotiation and a constant battle. And there's many cooks in the kitchen and many people trying to change and, and, and develop the ideas. And um, this is just not a solitary, non-social form of writing. This is very, uh, extremely social, I would say. So you've got to get used to keeping everyone on the same page by documenting your outlines really carefully. And if you're not organized, if the writer on the movie isn't organized, how are the four producers you're working with going to stay organized? So you have to become the backbone of organization. And you become not only the writer, you are now the script department when you are do especially when you're doing rewrites you are the script department so um they need you to be on track uh so try to get really good at organizing and outlining is what i will say the simple version of that um let's get into it because we have lots to do and also we want to have a lot of time to look at student log lines today so if you have if you know what log lines are and you know how to write them and know how that works then be working on it through class because in the second half of this class i do intend to look at everyone's log lines um, I think we should have time to look at at least one from everybody. So if you're juggling between multiple that you're not sure which one I want to pick, then maybe narrow it down to three and we can try to help you choose them. Um, but if you, um, if, you, if you have at least part of one or if you have an incomplete one or one that's not very good, this is a good time to get feedback on it. So and if you don't know how to write them yet, then we will get into that in this class. We will definitely cover that before the end of the hour. What time is it now? 4.20. Okay. Um, great. So uh, let's go over some ground rules and some suggestions for things to be thinking about and also the kinds of ideas that you should be working on and choosing for the class so like we said this is going to be eight weeks this is boot camp style so this is like the rigorous you know we're keeping you on track there's not penalties or grades or anything like that but every week there's we will ask about the work from last time so we'll ask about your progress and updates and we'll ask about scripts that you've read recently because you need to be continually reading scripts in addition to just writing the one that you're working on um, so i will ask it every single time what is a script that you read this week? Um, and I will ask everybody every time. So please continue reading scripts. And if you're not sure what to do to start improving your skills, you need to go pick like five blacklist scripts to read and read them all very carefully and take notes. Um, and like that is one of the main things you can do to get better at this. Almost every, um, I, I, how should I put this? <laughs> very few of the students in the boot camps are reading enough scripts. But the ones that are, are the ones that are at the highest, or writing at the highest level, without any exception, I will just say. So take from that what you will, but the, the highest performing and the most professional writing is coming from the students who are reading the absolute most. There's some correlation there. You've got to continue to read. Um, so before we begin, um, remember, like I mentioned before, you have to get used to letting things go and moving on to the next thing. Because your goal is really to become a writer. It's not to have written one thing that's going to make your whole career. It's going to take many years of writing things to break in as an actual professional writer. So you should focus on the things you can really control, which are your own abilities and your own skills, which and developing the skills necessary to plan and execute feature ideas consistently on a quick time frame and with a high level of quality. So don't expect to write a script that's going to get you anything at the end of this course, except for building those skills. So um, you got to uh, realize that nobody starts out good at this. This takes a long time. This is a lot of work. So but to that end, or on that same note, you can pick ideas that are completely new and fresh for this boot camp that you're less attached to or less invested in. And that's actually kind of a great thing because the less attached you are, the more free you will feel to write that and get the pages down, even if it's not working, even if it's bad, even if whatever insecurities are coming up. You're like, this is some new idea that I just thought would be cool and I'm using this to, you know, to, to lift weights at the gym. It's not some old idea I've been kicking around for years. It's not some, it's not a, a novel that I spent my entire life writing that I'm now trying to adapt into a script. It's not my life story. It's not um, something I've been working on since I was a child. This is a newer, fresher idea that you don't care that much about. And that's actually a valuable thing. Um, pick an idea that you will not be overly attached to, or you're not gonna let perfectionism get in the way of you finishing. Overall, if you're spending more than six months on a script, you probably need to change up your process. You should be aiming to write a first draft in um, eight to 12 weeks, and then a subsequent draft in probably six to 10, and then maybe one more draft in four to six. Um, around there, you should probably stop and move on to the next thing. Your scripts are gonna hit a point of diminishing returns where the longer you work on something, especially just an hour and a half of entertainment, um, the longer you move something around, it's not going to become better automatically by default. So your job is to write many bad scripts to get to the good ones. I don't want to go through all of these at the moment just because I want to make sure we have plenty of time to get to our student log lines, but at least take a look at this if you want. These are some myths and assumptions about screenwriting, um, things like 
uh, you know, writers have full control over their scripts, which is not the case. And once the script is sold, then the director can change, you know, the producers can change it. The director can change it. Everyone can change it. You're not the final authority unless you are the writer and director on the script itself. The director is really in charge in feature writing. And we have to get used to this slightly frustrating idea that you are not the most important voice in the room. You are kind of, um, it's weird because your script is like a business proposal to create a business that will employ over a hundred people and move millions of dollars. Um, but you can also be fired from it. You can be fired from your own movie quite easily. And it's very common for writers to be overwritten. And then that person's overwritten and then that person's overwritten. And just the way that the studio writing system works, you must detach and untether from your ideas to some extent. Um, you, uh, what else do we want to look at on here? Um, this is just cause you heard somebody sold their first script ever does not mean that happens really. This is not a viable overnight success career. This takes an average of 10 years before you get good enough at writing movies to actually begin to like even start to get meetings. Um, and once you get a manager or agent, it's not over by a long shot. Often it still takes another year or two or more to actually sell something or get staffed. So um, this is a frustrating and difficult job and you should be here because you love this more than anything else. And you can't imagine doing anything else for a living because we say, you know, if you could do something else, you should. This takes a long time, is incredibly difficult, uphill, Sisyphusian, frustrating nightmare of a job. Um, you don't want to do this job unless you can't do anything else, unless writing movies is the one thing you can see yourself doing. Or maybe if you are a novelist or playwright or something like that, and you maybe just want to expand your skills and maybe think of ways you could adapt your other works into films at some point, perhaps you want to go that route instead of just being a pro feature writer specifically. But... Uh, it's years regardless. It's going to take years. Um, I'm not even going to go over all these realities, but basically you probably have to move to LA eventually. Um, you don't have to move to LA right away. You should spend the years getting your skills to the point where they need to be, and you should maybe consider breaking in on your local market, a country, local city market, whatever it is before moving to LA. But especially if you want to write for TV, you will eventually have to move to Los Angeles. So accustom yourself to that idea. Um, what else? How to be a feature writer. Get really good at writing movies, like I mentioned. So that's what this class is about. It's not to say that you have to take classes like this or read one specific book or do any one specific thing or pay anyone anything. All you have to do is read and pay attention and write in order to get better. But there are classes and courses and writing groups and all these things that can help you do that. Um, step two is going to be actually go back and do step one because almost everyone moves on before they're ready or before they actually really 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 do get good at writing movies this is like good in the sense not just that your friends and family are like oh yeah that was cool um nice job this is more good in the sense that there are people reaching out to you because they want to read more of your work you're getting meetings and you're starting to win, win and place in contests and fellowships and things like that that is about the stage that you know you're ready to probably start actually trying to get reps and um, when you start to place in high level contests and fellowships. Um, you're gonna need to make a portfolio of three to five unique and riveting and undeniably amazing scripts, which will take many years but as you, you know, just cause you write one great one doesn't mean the next one will, it's not like a linear process where everyone is sequentially better than the last one. Sometimes you write one great one, then you write a bad one, then you write an okay one, then you write another bad one, then you write an amazing one, then you write an okay one. Like it's not, there's, it, it's so subjective. It's like, well, we're talking about a type of art. So, it's not gonna be straightforward and everyone's path, it, it kind of goes all over the place. Um, but the point is you need to eventually come out with about three really good scripts. That you're going to try to get ripped by a manager, meaning that you probably have to place in highly in contests and fellowships and also just network extensively. So it will help if you went to a film school or to USC or something like that. But um, the, the point is you probably have to move to LA to begin to actually meet the people who are assistants who will then later become producers and managers and agents and all these things. So. It helps to be here to meet the people you need to meet. You can try querying as well once you have placed in really high in fellowships and contests and stuff, and perhaps you will get some responses. It's unlikely that you will get very many. Um, so you're going to work with that manager there to get a writing assignment, possibly pitching on those for a while, and working with them to develop a spec that you can that they can then take out, which means send to, send to their network of contacts that they think will be appropriate for that script in town. This takes forever to agree with them on what the idea is and the execution of it, and they often will want to have a heavy hand in telling you basically what to do in the script. Um, you have to just basically shut up and do what they say. Um, you'll then take general meetings and then, um, which was represents just kind of meet and greets with different companies um, and uh, different um, producers. Then spe hopefully specific meetings on a certain script that someone is interested in and you will work with those producers or other players to develop perhaps 
the script that they are interested in most likely for free you're not going to get paid to develop it um unless you're you know <laughs> already famous um and then uh you will have to do a lot of rewrites and a lot a lot a lot of free revisions and then you're going to do those steps about 500 times as various projects fall apart and then finally eventually you will sell a feature and join the writers guild and party i have not done that i have not i'm not in the writers guild i have an, i have a feature that's set up and is being packaged but has not sold um so you can't join the writers guild until you earn enough points to join and you earn points by selling a feature to a guild signatory company which is worth all 24 points or you can use you can do several episodes of tv i think an hour long episode is worth eight points a half hour long is worth four points so you can write three hour long episodes of tv for a signatory or you can write what eight half hour episodes that kind of thing so yeah you get the idea you got to just earn the points by doing very high level work with pro signatory companies um, all right, this is all kind of boring. Um, let's uh, let's move on to more interesting stuff. Um, why is this difficult? Well, lots of reasons. We don't. I'm not going to go over every reason why this is difficult. But um, more or less, there's not a lot of easy walkthroughs through how to do this. That's why with this class and why with this all of the server and this community, the goal is to kind of you know demystify a lot of the difficult um, parts of this and to just break it down into step by step, one at a time, one on one. What do I do to write a feature film? Um, so uh, just don't worry too much about if any individual script is good um, or a masterpiece or exactly as you wanted it to be, just a bricklayer doesn't have to care if every brick is a masterpiece. You have a road to build, so you should already be, instead of concerning yourself over whether any individual brick is perfect, you should be making the next brick or placing the next brick. Um, okay, let's look at the overview for this course. This is going to be five parts, and there's always five um, phases or sections to any boot camp class I do. We start, and because this is just how I write anything. Um, we start with logline. Um, that is the one sentence expression of what the story is about. We then move to sketchbook. That's your kind of unsorted collage of all your research and ideas and um, snippets of what the story could be. We then move to story beats, which are an, um, a list of the major events of the scenes in the correct order that they should go in. It doesn't have to include everything, but the major events of the story in order. And you're going to move to scene cards, where you expand that story beat summary into a full paragraph for every single uh, scene in the script, as well as noting out the pages that it will take place on. So you should be kind of making a plan for how many pages each scene will be as you go through. Then you're going to finally, after doing all of that, which is that is some hard work there that takes about three, four weeks, we will then go to pages. We go to pages being a term that means you will start to actually format the script in the proper software and actually write out the scenes. Before we go to pages, you don't have to write a single line of dialogue. You don't have to write interior or exterior or anything. You're just writing on your outline until we go to pages. Um, what is the logline? So this is the entire story boiled down to just one sentence or two. Usually though, I the ones that I see that are two sentences, my first thought is this should be one sentence. So it should probably be one, but it is going to imply the visual action of the movie and it's going to suggest an interesting, compelling story. This is sort of like a handshake between you and some entity who is w willing to read that because they are interested in either you or that particular story whatever it is. So um, you, you're going to imply several really key things in this logline. And just by writing a really strong logline, you will have a great sense of the story structure just already off the bat. So you can already fill in several blank sp spaces on your outline just by writing a good logline. So we want to know who's, what is the inciting incident or the thing that kicks this story off. Who is the protagonist? That's super, super important. Um, do movies have to have a one central protagonist? Answer, yes. Yes, they do. Movies are about one person, one person's journey. And if your script, if we come away from a script asking yourself the question, whose story was that? You have messed up big time. A script or a, a feature film script is a story of a person who did a thing or a person who does a thing. And we talk in present tense most of the time when referring to stories like this, because when you start talking in past tense, that makes it sound like you think that these things actually happened. Um, if you were doing a documentary or maybe something based on a true story, you might want to use past tense, but largely we will be speaking about our stories entirely in the present tense. Um, so who's the protagonist? What do they want? As in, what is their act two goal going to be? What is in their way? So we want to know what the obstacle is or the antagonist or the thing that is making this journey difficult. And then finally, what happens if they fail? That's going to be your stakes or your ticking clock, which might be some device that's pushing them towards that bad consequence if they fail. Um, so here's the logline template that I often suggest people start with. You don't always have to use this template for your entire life, but these are the questions that we will have. And if you don't answer these questions, those are going to be the first ones you get. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to write this without the inciting incident, our first question will be, what kicks the story off? 
Um, so when or after inciting incident, that's that one event that sets the story into motion, an adjective protagonist, and choose that adjective very carefully because that adjective is going to s suggest what their internal journey will be, or perhaps it'll tell us who they are at the start of the narrative, which will be challenged throughout the story so that by the end it does it, it does more or less imply or we can infer a an internal journey from it or it might be something the main character is struggling with or it might be something that they some it it might inform the tactic that they're going to use to accomplish their goal so pick don't just pick an adjective and don't make it just the first thing that comes to your mind if it's going to be something like a determined detective it's like okay every detective we would assume to be determined a protective mother i won't you assume every mother to be protective until we're told otherwise so try to pick something you know you can define almost any character in, in several different terms you might describe somebody as a father or as a construction worker or as a um a devoted husband depending on what the story is about what is the focus or scope of that story right so describe them in terms that suggest what is their role in the narrative and what is their we want to suggest what their internal journey will be um so pick your adjective carefully At when an inciting incident occurs an adjective protagonist that's who they are in act one must conflict that's the interesting essential action of act two because we say act two is the movie so the second uh third of the script i mean it's more it's a bit but not proportional so it's like a, a larger second third that doesn't make sense um the second act is the longest of all of the three acts and we say the second act is the movie because that's where the stuff that you promised is going to be happening anything that was in the trailer or the poster like that sort of stuff should be occurring in the second act so you need to be suggesting they must do this conflict and it should have a tangible goal of some kind if it's a character that just needs to come to terms with something that does not sound like a tangible goal for a movie that sounds too internal don't rely too heavily on internal intangible goals he needs to reconnect with this person he needs to think about this they need to discuss this there's almost no less dramatic word than discuss um so make sure you're suggesting what they're doing in a way that we can imagine what we're going to be watching people do in the movie um and not just it shouldn't seem like it's just a movie about people sitting around thinking about things so before or in order to stakes or ticking clock that's the bad thing that's going to happen if they don't that's the it's going to provide a sense of urgency because it's going to suggest if they don't do this by this time something terrible will happen and it matters to them it should be clear why it matters to them the ticking clock is going to be a device that's going to be moving us towards those stakes so you know this might be an actual bomb that's ticking down to zero so the character has to def find the terrorist before the bomb goes off. That would be an easy ticking clock, a literal ticking clock. Or it might be something like, you know, the, uh, mom and dad will be home in three days and we need to clean up the house party before then. Or it might, you know, it's just anything that adds this really clear time limit or time frame to the events that we're um, talking about. So um, did we post the uh, logline um, macro in the chat yet? Let me check here. There it is, thank you for that. So um, I would open up your blank Google document right now and start writing this out, via whatever you have for your story, even if you're not 100% sure that it's great or perfect or done, um, maybe just start noting out who is the protagonist, what is the inciting incident. Um, couple tips, um, a couple is not a protagonist, a group of teenagers is not a protagonist, a protagonist is one single person or entity if you're writing like a Pixar movie about talking, you know, race cars or whatever it is uh one entity is the protagonist we don't want to have we don't want to suggest a bunch of protagonists even if it's an ensemble story you still want to frame that ensemble story around an a like an a thread okay um let me check we have a couple questions in the uh chat i'm gonna have to scroll up here to see them okay so linka raja says oh sorry linka raja says what is the hollywood way of charging writers for their scripts to get exposure, I wonder if the industry in my home country does the same way. We don't have something like the blacklist here. We just write a script and make it into a movie, then submit it to film festivals, which are mostly free. Yeah, it's really expensive to get started in screenwriting. Um, almost every opportunity you submit to will cost about seventy-five to one hundred and fifty dollars, and that's just to submit. That's not even um, to guarantee you're going to get feedback. Sometimes getting feedback will cost you up to two hundred dollars just for the just for that. So um, it's very pay to play. It's uh, it's very frustrating um you don't absolutely there are it's not as if if you don't have the money to pay for entering contests then there's no way you can ever succeed i mean try their early deadlines they're usually about half the, half as much money um you can always just send people your scripts and network and meet people who will become agents and managers and assistants and all these things but so i will say probably 
if you're not going to be spending the money on entering stuff, you definitely need to be in Los Angeles. Um, looks like we have uh, Lazima posted a logline. Thanks for that. We will get to loglines in, um, what time is it now? It's 4.40. Okay, so in about 20, 30 minutes, we will get to the loglines. Um, so get ready. You'll just prepare to repost that when we get to that section. Um, and then, oh, thank you for that, Simone. Um, so yeah, be prepared to, to repost those in, in just a little bit. I want to go over some other stuff first, but start working on your log lines. Start refining them based on the things that we are talking about in this class. I would open up your Google Doc, and as I am speaking, just begin to work that out. Um, okay, so let's look at a couple more slides before we look at student log lines, which we'll do about at the end of the this hour. Um, so uh, I would oh, why not just start your sketchbook now? In fact, and you can work on your do we have a slide on that? Here it is. Um, so uh, you are going to want to open up a new Google Doc. Um, I think Google Docs are the easiest thing to use, and we all almost, almost all of us already have accounts on this just because it uses your Google account, which is Gmail, YouTube, everything. So you probably have one of these already, and it's just the most convenient thing to, sh to work on and to share in class. So probably use that, but um, make a new document, title it, name of your movie sketchbook, and at the top you're going to write the title, genre, logline and comps what are comps comps are comparable movies to your movie so it's going to be this movie meets that movie the way you can think of this might be it's the action or the um the events of this movie but maybe in the setting or the style of that one um that's not always it's not like an exact science you kind of just have to pick as best you can this isn't a good opportunity to show off. If you pick comps that your reader just doesn't know, you don't get bonus points. And if they have to look it up, they might just annoy them. So try not to pick things that are too obscure um, and try to pick things that are generally successful. Obviously, you don't want to pick something that was a massive bomb as one of your comps because then it's going to seem like, oh, this is going to be like The Room meets The Lone Ranger. Then we're like, wait, those are both huge flops. Why would we do that? Um, so yeah, just come up with two or maybe a couple ideas for them. But you want to, when you are done with these you want to just have two don't have this meets this meets this meets this meets this two it should generally be all you need same with genres um don't combine 10 genres together don't say it's a romantic adventure western noir like just pick two at the most boil it down you might have to be reductive but just pick two genres at the most um joseph says can we post sketchbooks uh yeah you can i mean i didn't think anybody would have a sketchbook done for class today we'll be looking at them next week um so yeah post post from next week um, okay, so go ahead and, and make your uh, log line, uh, or sorry, make your sketchbook now, and at the top you can write down all these things, so title, genre, and comps, and then underneath that you can start working on the log line or different ideas of what the log line could be. Um, I'm going to show the template one more time, and also it's in our chat, but um, be, be using this unless you have done this enough that you don't feel you need to use this, basically. So, when or after, inciting incident, an adjective, protagonist, must conflict before or in order to stakes or ticking clock. Okay, that's in the chat, so if you need to review that, you can go back to there, but just start working on that at the moment. I'm gonna go through some more slides and talk more about this, but um, in 15 to 20 minutes, we will start going over these. Okay, so sketchbook, like we said before, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is going to be all of your ideas. So you want them all in the same place. You wanna include all your research material too. So if you're like, this takes place in a different culture or country or I don't know, a different world of some kind, then you might want to include pictures or YouTube links or any kind of research material like that, um, you know, uh, articles or interviews or anything, um, possible endings, bits of dialogue, the setting and the rules of the world, photos, drawings, just whatever inspires you about this idea and whatever is just going to, you know, this is the fun part at the beginning where you just get to write down all the cool stuff and it doesn't have to make sense or add up yet. So. Write down whatever you want um, for the sketchbook. This should include just a bunch of ideas for scenes, a bunch of ideas for characters. You should be working out whatever problems it seems like you might have so far. Um, so once you are um, well on your way there, then you don't have to write this down now. Keep working on your log line. Don't, don't get distract too distracted by this. We're not going to go way too deep into structure today. That's more for next week. But you're going to start writing up the structure, which is going to be, you can see right here, this is the structure that I'm usually using in terms of these, are, all these numbers are pages. So like, um, and all these different sections of that are written down below are representing the different structural beats of the script. Um, we're using three act structure in Hollywood writing, always, always, always talking in terms of three act structure. There is pretty much no exception to this. 
if you can't write in the three-act structure, you probably shouldn't be directing the movies yourself. Um, so uh, the, the the genres that I'm writing in are ones that are 90 pages. That their sweet spot is around 90 pages. So I'm usually writing horror, thriller, and action, which both you know, if, which all three of those, if you get them around 90 pages, that's um, considered ideal. So uh, that's why I have written this out, assuming that you would be writing 90 pages. If you're writing a slightly longer script than this, then you might need to adjust these numbers to compensate for that. But um, these are the basics. So Act 1, 25 pages. Act 2 is 40 pages. Act 3 is 25 pages. So just by looking at the proportions there, you can see very clearly that Act 2 is the movie. Act 2 is, by all means, by any definition, the movie. Um, so uh, make sure that you are starting. Before you, before you go to pages, you need to have a very strong sense of what your Act 2 is going to be. If you're trying to juggle between several different ideas, you should be picking the ones with the best endings or with the best ideas for what's happening in Act 2, which those key sort of premise scenes, as we call them, are going to be your major major set pieces and the, the stuff that people are really going to remember from the movie and that all your... Um, that's where the emphasis of the story just sort of needs to be at the, at the start. So make sure that you have a couple rock-solid sequences for the second act. Um, we're not going to go over every single story beat here, but the ones that you just need to know right now are Catalyst, which are, is also called Inciting Incident interchangeably. Same thing. Same thing. Catalyst is the Inciting Incident. And you can see I put that around page 10. Usually in a 90-page script, I'll put that around page 10. First acts are much shorter nowadays than they used to be. It used to be the Catalyst might not come for perhaps 20, 30 minutes. And you look at a movie from the 70s or 80s, it's like, how long before we actually meet Luke Skywalker and figure out what he's up to? It's like probably 20 minutes. Um, so just as times change, then structures change and expectations change. So it's not to say that there's only one way this will ever be, you'll ever, you know, you'll ever be able to do this. But um, for the most part, uh, nowadays, the, the trend is shorter first acts. So get that inciting incident around pages, you know, 10 to 15. And we're usually going to talk in terms of minutes and pages interchangeably, too. It's not an exact rule, and it's not always true. Sometimes multiple pages will be less than a minute, and sometimes, you know, a page will be several minutes or any of these things. But just it's, it's easiest to just think in those terms, and there's not a better shorthand or rule of thumb. So... We're going to use the page permanent rule just in general. So around 10 to 15 minutes, that's when your catalyst happens or inciting incident. This is the main thing that you need to be. Remember, you're including this in the log line. So this is the thing, the one event. A catalyst is not a series of events. It's one thing that happens that pushes your story into motion. It might be a, uh, a coincidence. And if anything in the script is a coincidence, it should be, in fact, the catalyst. But that is the one event that is like um, it might unveil a kind of door to your main character or it shows them that there's a possibility that their life could change um and then they're going to quickly realize oh wait this door seems like it's locked um and i'm trying to get through even though there's something tempting on the other side there's a bunch of challenges provided you know linked with getting through it so we're not going to go way too much into structure into structure now but look at catalyst that should be in your log line the thing the one thing that starts the story and makes us feel like oh that's why this is happening now right so it shouldn't just be like you know a gang war um heats up between two separate um, uh, uh, factions in a prison. And um, it, it, in a log line, it would be more like when this specific thing happens, it sparks a gang war between these two separate gangs. So try to tell us what the thing is that's causing the story to happen. It, uh, our, we shouldn't be left with this question of why couldn't this happen any time? Why couldn't this happen three weeks after this? Or why does this have to happen in one day? Um, the time frame and just the, the causative elements should just be totally clear in the logline itself. So don't neglect that catalyst. Make sure we know what's making the story happen. Also make sure you have a great description for your main character, one single main character. So when catalyst occurs, an adjective protagonist, and that's sort of describing who they are in act one, they must conflict. That's telling you what's happening in act two. So from the premise scenes all the way up to the you know midpoint and through the escalation, that's gonna be, what are they actually doing in the script? They have to and pick your words carefully. Um, if you use the word, like you say it's going to be uh, like an escape thriller, let's say it's going to be about a, a guy who's been kidnapped by a um, gorilla. And so the second act of that movie, we might say he has to outwit the gorilla. Uh, you know, a, a, a timid zookeeper must outwit the gorilla, keeping him captive before it eats him, right? So that's going to be imply the ticking clock or the, the stakes, life and, life and death, he will be eaten. And it's telling us also what he's going to be doing in the movie. He's going to have to outwit the gorilla, meaning it's probably going to be a little bit smarter. And um, maybe even, you know, it's a 
super intelligent talking gorilla something like that and it's just going to clarify for us oh he doesn't just have to find a way to kill it his specific tactic or the thing that we are watching in the, in the movie is a guy play you know mind games with his captor so pick your words carefully you don't get a lot of words to use um you you must weigh and judge whether or not you're going to include each word um with a lot of consideration so let's look at um uh again i'm not going to go through all of the structure stuff right now but act one is the setup act two is the confrontation and act three is the finale and resolution that's the easiest way to think of act one act two act three and remember act two is the longest so this diagram should be like uh i don't know the lines should be a little wider in the in the middle um okay so before we do anything else i want to check to see if we have any questions so far on log lines or things that you should include or not include in a log line or maybe just something on the basics of structure the floor is open for any questions Okay, maybe no questions, that's all right. Let's keep going then. Um, I want to just look at a few more slides, then we will post our log lines in the chat. If you're looking for the chat, it's on the left-hand side of your Discord window. If you scroll down, um, down to uh, past all those discussion channels, you will find one underneath website help. It says feature class. That is where you're going to be linking your log lines. Um, okay, so let's just look at a few more things first. Um, do I have... Okay, here we go. So, uh, boot camp ground rules for ideas to choose. No true stories, anthologies, no rewrites or adaptations. For feature boot camp, the goal is to write a brand new, original feature film um, that is not having the baggage or the additional difficulty of adaptation, which is actually, it might sound easier because you're like, oh, I have a book, or perhaps I even wrote a book, or I wrote something, a short story, something beforehand. So I've done all the hard work. I just need to adapt. I just need to reformat that into script form. But that's not the case at all. Um, uh, the shortest possible adult publishable book is going to be, you know, 60 to 80,000 words or whatever. Or, you know, sometimes it'll be slightly short. Novellas or whatever will be shorter than that. But uh, uh, adult, you know, fiction are going to be 60,000 words plus almost all the time. That's just way more than is in a script. So you have to do a lot of excision and cutting. And it's just way harder than you think it would be to adapt something. So it's because we want to avoid that and we want to just focus on the essential skills of writing a brand new feature film we're going to say don't do true stories don't do anything that would require a ton of research that's why we say probably don't do a historical but if you have some kind of basis or grounding or education or um what anything experience with that culture or time period maybe it's a little more doable and maybe you just love historicals and that's the only thing you can see doing so you want to do one anyway but that's okay um what just beeped at me <laughs> can you guys still hear me Something just beeped. Did I activate a voice? Did I say something like Siri and then it? Um, <laughs> Are you guys there? I think we can hear you okay. Okay, good. Um, I Something definitely beeped. I must have said, I must have act voice activated something in my room. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so yeah, uh, probably don't do a historical unless you really, 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 really want to. Um, don't do time travel. Just trust me. Don't take that as a challenge. If someone always does. They always regret it. Don't do it. Um, don't do more than did it not to write this in. Did I write this? No more than two clones. I can't believe that's an actual rule. Um, I would say just uh, stay away from scripts about clones or body swapping or things like that that are going to really, really strain the conventions on the page or that will require you to kind of invent new conventions on the page to clearly be able to communicate the idea. Like, I'm just going to urge you away from clones, alternate dimensions, and body switching. Um, and try not to lean too heavily on montages. I make up this fake rule. Only two montages. There's no real, actual, really real rule on this, but just newer writers lean way too heavily on flashbacks and montages. And sometimes they'll have flashbacks to montages or montages of flashbacks. And I'm like, just tell the story straightforward, sequentially, start at the beginning and go to the end M for the most part. Maybe you have a movie that fundamentally involves flashbacks in its structure, in which case, then it's a little bit more okay and it can feel like okay this is just how you're telling this story but it shouldn't be something that we lean on in order to just for the sake of narrative um like shortcuts anyway so it's a great time to take big swings 
and just write this big, wacky, crazy, fun idea of while building the skills and the fundamentals of, of doing this. So maybe consider some mashup of concepts that you've always wanted to see that would never get made. Maybe you're like, I don't know. I love road trip movies, and I absolutely love samurai movies. What if I did a samurai road trip movie? What would that even be? And so you'd have to kind of, you know, figure it out. But th And that would probably never get made. It's fine. But it is a good opportunity to pick ideas like that because you just got to get yourself excited enough to work on something for eight weeks. Get used to the idea of sharing your work with me and your fellow students and everyone even at these early stages, and even if it's not perfect yet, um, no one's gonna steal your work, I promise you. This is all student stuff, and even in prof the professional world, um, that just doesn't happen. Um, the idea should be that you are open and willing to share early versions of things, even if they're not done. If you wanna work in a writer's room, you must be ready to hear things like, that doesn't work, or get shot down very quickly, or you, you have to just build up a thicker skin for hearing that even the early versions of things are maybe troublesome or problematic for whatever reason. So work on, work on developing your feedback receiving skills, I will say. Um, and if you want to continue in the boot camp, you don't have to do this today, but for the later meetings. So as of a week from now, you have to use a real name um, and not a username in the camp. So you can't use a screen name in the industry. So that means you must use uh, either if it's not your real name, you really, really don't want to use your own real name for some reason, then you have to pick some kind of nickname. Use your middle name, use your brother's name, use your dog's name, but um, just it has to sound like a person's name and not be, you know, have a bunch of numbers or symbols in it or things like that. So it's just a respect and professionalism thing. So let's look at um, while you're still uh, working on these blog lines, because I hope that you're still um, working on, like, you know, fiddling with it. If you have one that's almost done, you can be improving it as much as you can. Or maybe you're trying to still figure out what your idea for a movie is. Either thing's okay, but just as I'm talking, I would be working on this and be preparing to post your log lines pretty soon. Let's look at what our reader is looking for in a log line. Um, so we want stories with high stakes. Movies are usually very high stakes um, for their genre. So not every... High stakes doesn't always mean life and death. In certain genres, that is a pretty natural... Th you know, ex expectation for the story. But in other ones, um, the highest possible stakes for a romance movie might be divorce, right? Or it might be a breakup or you never see your loved one ever again. Um, in a buddy comedy, it might be your, your friendship has ended with your best friend. Or um, re a love story might be the person that you are in love with decides to date, go on a date with somebody else. Or maybe they hold hands with somebody else if it's like, a, I don't know, like a Victorian romance or maybe like a middle school romance or something like that then that might be the highest possible stakes for your main character. So look at what matters to your main character. And basically, this should a movie should be a story that matters to your main character. Um, most of the time, it's going to be the biggest event in their life and the most important events in their life. Uh, not always. Um, and sometimes some series will, over time, even fall victim to this kind of narrative scope problem where, like, Die Hard 1 sort of feels like the most, the biggest case in John McClane's life. Um, or it's not even a case, it's just coincidence that he happens to be there and gets involved in this crazy shootout with terrorists and saves the day. And then the, in the sequel, it's even bigger. And the sequel from that, it's even bigger. And it starts to just feel like, wait, he just does this all the time. The first movie was not actually some kind of extraordinary event in his life. Uh, so like, you'll, run into, you'll see weird things like that sometimes. But generally, this is a very key formative moment in your main character's life, even if what they're doing is pretty small. I mean, like the movie Lady Bird is a, um, I don't know if we'd call it mumblecore, but... Um, it's like a sleepy indie dramedy, basically. But the main character is, she has to, you know, decide where to go to college. And uh, her, her relationship with her mom is really key to that movie. And, like, how, those, we can still see those as really important events for that person, even if it's not like, you know, ninjas with guns are chasing her. So look for stakes that are in some way primal or some way could be understood by anyone. So life and death is obviously the easiest one that's just most understandable to every single person. Even a baby understands life and death stakes to some extent um we have love um which might be you know uh this is a a a really key point of the romance genre in general but then this also might come up in other genres like an action film you're trying to save the person you love kind of thing um friendship revenge um anything that anyone can just sort of get right away uh power you know but if it is a character talking like just trying to acquire power or it's a character just trying to get what they want we should understand that that's like the most important thing to them, that if they don't get it, they'll be devastated. Like a movie like Whiplash, for, for example, that's a drama about a college student who wants to be a great drummer. Um, and we really, 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 really emphasize how much he wants this and how obsessed he is with it to the extent that 
it gets dangerous how obsessed he is with it. So if it's going to be a character just trying to get something they want, it should be clear that they want that thing more than anything else. Um, we're getting a bunch of spam in the uh, in on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't I don't think we want your spam. Um, yeah, yeah, he's it's blocked. But one sec. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we get these bots sometimes posting these lame uh, spam messages. So many emojis. Look at all those emojis. Dang. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, don't maybe don't spam us. It's not nice. Um, although this is kind of funny. N don't, not to encourage you, spammers. Um, so anyway, we're, what are we talking about? Loglines. Um, any questions so far on loglines, the kinds of loglines that you should be writing, the kinds of things you should be doing to emphasize and underscore the urgency of your main character's journeys? Any, any questions on anything that we've talked about? What might we mean by the size of the story? Anyone, feel free to unmute or write in the text. The size of the story, what does that mean? Joseph says, like, the scope. Yeah, so the it's sort of a combination of the scope, the, the depth of the stakes, um, and uh, a few other factors like that that are just going to determine, like, how monumental of an event is these and how much narrative ground will it require to cover or how much, you know, space is it going to require to adequately explore that story. Stories with more characters are bigger by default because in order to give a character a rational and satisfying arc, that requires pages. Um, so by having seven main characters or 10 main characters or doing an ensemble with, let's say, I don't know, 12 to 15 main characters, then um, you're going to really need more pages to explore those people's stories and to, to make sure that, that everything's clicking into place. So the size is going to um, also sort of relate to the character's goal, like the difficulty of their goal a little bit too. So a more difficult goal will require a broader scope of journey to accomplish usually. A very small story would be a guy is really hungry, so he wants to get a sandwich, so he goes to the cafe downstairs to get a sandwich, and he has to overcome various obstacles in the cafe to get that sandwich, right? Like, there's a really chatty lady who won't leave him alone. He runs into a, a, a one of his childhood best friends that distracts him from getting his sandwich, whatever it is. Like, that is a story, and as long as you have the intention and obstacle and tactic and all these just kind of classical elements of narrative, then it might be entertaining, but it's a very, very small story because why? Scope is very low. A guy just wants a sandwich um, because he's hungry. Uh, it does not involve world-shaking consequences. It will not require a massive um, physical travel to go on or to accomplish. It's not going to require him to really push to the edge of his skills. It's not going to require a bunch of different locations all over the world. Um, it's just in one building, very simple goal. That's a very small story. And you might get the note sometimes, this story seems too small. Or maybe it's too big. An example of something that might be too big would be something that seems like it should be a TV show. Or if it's about, you know, the, the densely interconnected lives of 12 different characters on varying sides of the law. Like, The Wire would not be a good movie. Because The Wire has a ton of characters with a lot of really complicated, multifaceted relationships. And a lot going on. Um, so, for a feature, we're looking for something that's, you know, it's the Goldilocks thing where it's not too big, not too small. It's just right. We're looking for something that feels appropriate for your genre and like we can sort of see or imagine what the main set pieces would be and that we can sort of envision the extent, like we can envision the movie just from hearing the logline. So, um, try to, um, to pick something that feels like it can be reasonably accomplished in 90 minutes to, to two hours. Um, those will be things, th bigger things will be better suited for miniseries or uh, TV shows, and small stories are better suited to web series, one act plays, or short stories, or things like that. Um, we want movies that are visual and dynamic and about people doing stuff. I think I said it shouldn't feel like this is all going to be about someone thinking about stuff or remembering stuff, or God forbid, people coming to terms with stuff or discussing stuff. Um, those sound all very, very internal, and it's not that you can't have internal arcs and goals for your character. You, in fact, need to have them but we are largely going to understand them 
through their um, their connection to this external journey. So you're going to focus on the external journey for the log line, but these little things that you can do, like the adjective for your main character, are going to imply the internal journey. So you might say, you know, a guy who hates, uh, let's say a guy um, is trapped in the woods with a bear and needs to escape. Okay, there's pretty much a movie there. But the second we say he's a guy who hates bears is trapped in the woods with a bear. <laughs> or let's say, I don't know, uh, a guy who hates woodland animals ends up trapped in the woods. On a, he's on a camping trip. He's forced on this camping trip. And then he ends up having to team up with a wolf to fight the bear. Then we start to say, okay, I can see the internal journey because this is going to be not only him trying to overcome this physical threat, it's going to be about him trying to overcome this fear or this hatred within himself. But that shouldn't seem like that's all he's doing. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like a bunch of campers go to the woods to, to come to terms with their fear of bears through uh, a, an intellectual discussion in which they will debate the merits of bears and other animals in a, some sort of a courtroom setting. Um, that just does not sound like a movie. That sounds like a short story. So um, make sure that it sounds like it's about people moving around and doing stuff. To the extent that, like, even, like, this isn't, this doesn't really pertain to your logline necessarily, but this is just to emphasize to you how key it is that you get your characters, you know, boots on the ground, going to places and doing stuff as much as you can. We don't even like to write phone conversations. We generally are guided away from writing phone conversations if you can put those people in the same room, if there's, like, any feasible way. Even if, because, like, you see this on TV all the time, where on TV they'll, somebody will, like, show up to someone's house and they'll have a conversation in the front lawn. And, like, we don't necessarily do that in real life and sometimes they have good excuses i've been watching a lot of mayor of kingstown and that's a crime drama so you get the idea that you know we can't talk on phones because they might be monitored or they might use it against us or it might be searched later and our records might be pulled or something like that so it sort of makes sense why none of the characters actually want to have the important conversations on the phone and they prefer to do so face to face but the more movies are about people doing stuff so it should from your log line alone and well i should say just to wrap up what i was saying on a scene-by-scene -scene basis, we want to have your characters doing stuff, not calling people on the phone, not looking things up online, not thinking about or talking about or discussing stuff. Have them in the location doing the interesting thing whenever you can. Um, it's obviously okay if you sometimes have a phone call or sometimes, you know, don't, they don't have to be getting in a kung fu fight in every scene. But um, the I think you get the idea that movies are about people doing stuff. Okay, um, let me see uh, if there's anything else I want to go over before we look at the log lines here. We're right about at the time where I want to, so be prepared to post them. Let me just um, scroll through these slides real quick. Should we post some log, or should we look at some log lines? I guess we probably should, shouldn't we? Are there any ones on here that are not mine? Do we have a slide that's just on good log lines? I wonder. Let me double check here. Maybe not. Okay, we're just going to look at mine for now. Uh, so you're stuck with me. Um, let's look at uh, a few of mine. And so these are for my scripts from my portfolio that I have gotten the most results from. I've written dozens and dozens and dozens of scripts over 10, 12 years, whatever it is. Um, but uh, these are the ones that I that got my career started. So Peter and the Wolves. Peter and the Wolves is what got me signed in 2017 um, and what placed in the top 10 of the Launchpad um, Tracking Boards Launchpad Contest and Nickel Quarterfinals um, and got me meetings all over town. Um, this is, uh, you can see, I don't actually follow the exact format of that template, um, but it is in the basic shape and it does still answer the same questions. Where did I put it? A sensitive boy in Nazi besieged Leningrad must hunt down the cannibal that ate his friend. It doesn't say, when a cannibal eats his friend, a sensitive boy in Nazi Aziz Leningrad must hunt him down before stakes, which would be, I, I figured that the for this one in particular, the stakes are implied, the implication being the cannibal will continue to eat the rest of his friends and eventually him. Um, I figured it was better to hit us with a short and visceral and to the point sentence rather than fully explicate the stakes rather than just imply them. So um, you can, you, once you know the format pretty well, you can start to like, manipulate it and, and reshape it a little bit but just be aware of the questions that the readers will have um the tube this was nickel semifinals um and got me a bunch of um read requests and meetings in 2019 in love with her boss a melancholy housekeeper must follow the dark guidance of a strange sentient television to get rid of his fiance before they marry so this one is a little bit more traditional it's probably a little too few too many words but 
um, we see the motivation of the character. Uh, we have description of the character that is going to inform her how she moves about the world or the tactics that she'll use or just what, what she's struggling with. So we're seeing, okay, she's melancholy. The story is going to be about her trying to become happy by getting with her boss, which to do that, she has to first get rid of his fiance. Um, and so she's going to use the help of a talking TV to do it, basically. So, um, hint line. Uh, this is a script. I did not actually write this log line. This is by an old manager of mine, but um, this is a script that I have set up at a production company now. A jaded game designer becomes the only lifeline to a young assistant stranded in a ski lodge with her murderous boss. Guiding him over the phone, he must use his point-and-click gaming skills to save both their lives over the course of one harrowing night. I think this should be one sentence. Um, I don't. It doesn't matter. It's already set up somewhere, so it's already being packaged. So I don't need to come up with a better logline for it. I've already accomplished my goal. But that you can see how this one's a little fussier with the technical details. But it def definitely does give you a sense of the walls and the scope over the course of one night is really important. So like thrillers, especially, you should be clarifying what the time frame is that we're in most of the time, or perhaps the physical boundaries. So when I say walls of a story, I'm referring to time or chron chronology based boundaries or physical boundaries most of the time um and that's going to be it's going to tell you th that they need to escape from this house or they need to accomplish it by this time or um uh, hopefully you get the idea so um our last one is going to be the knowledge that has not been set up somewhere but was set up with a, an a-list producer for a little while um struggling with the herculean test to become a london cabbie a brash young delivery driver partners with a cantankerous older coachman who draws him into a deadly scheme the implication being, which he then must extricate himself from before terrible, he gets arrested or killed. Get it? Um, okay, so uh, that's my log lines here, and maybe um, we'll post some, some more. We have a, I think we have a macro to look at some more examples, and we'll look at more examples later as the course goes on, too. But that's basically what you're trying to do. You're trying to hook the reader, you're trying to say, this is what this is about. It's about this person who tries to do this thing. They are maybe using some kind of interesting tactic, or um, uh, it's going to tell us the interesting world they're going into, or it's just going to seem like it's not going to be like every other thing we've seen in that genre. If it feels too, too sort of down the middle, like it just it's going to start feeling like more of a description of that genre. If it's like you know, a jaded nihilistic alcoholic detective gets a case from a seductive mysterious woman to find a missing stash of money. It's going to start to just feel like, okay, you're just describing noir. You're not actually giving us your unique take on it or your unique spin on what that is about. So don't worry way too much about these things. Now, your goal is not to come up with a perfect logline or to write the most original movie ever. Your goal is just to learn how to write movies and learn how to organize yourself and learn how to outline and all of these, these things. So um, try to be original, but if you're not, then try, just finish. <laughs> write the movie and move on. Okay. We're at 5.15. I think I want to look at loglines now, so let's go ahead and post student loglines in the chat, and um, I will call on you as we go over these, and you're going to answer questions about them, so be prepared to unmute and to talk it out, but go ahead and post what you've got. Thank you, Simone. If you posted yours before, you might have to post it again just because it gets lost to the chat. I'll wait till we have a few more posts before we start calling on people. Let me bring it back to the logline slide. Where is it? Okay. Um, anybody else have a logline? I saw some posts earlier. Thank you for posting Searching Unicorn. And I'll just scroll up a little bit. And thank you, Lucina. OK, it looks like we have three up in the chat a little bit. OK, so um, let's start with Simone for Kensington Island. So can you read this out for us, please? OK, I'm sorry. Um, let me read this uh, real quick. Hold on one second. Um, we get back over. Okay, um, 1964. A successful romance novelist visiting her injured sister on a private island finds herself in a dangerous love triangle between a recent widower and his former future wife. Former slash future wife. Mm-hmm. Because she's both. Meaning he was married to her before, and he plans to be again. 
Yes. Since the death of his uh, wife, the other wife. Because he, okay, he left this wife that he's getting ready to remarry for the wife that recently passed away, mysteriously. Okay, let's um, let's let's break it apart. And also, we just need a, a genre on this. Is this a thriller or what is this? Or a drama, thriller, drama, thriller. Okay. All right. Hey, so I'll let you go. Thriller. Um, so okay. in nineteen sixty four. Okay, so I like how you is historical as well. So you start off with the year. That's fine. Okay, a successful romance novelist visiting her injured sister on a private island finds herself in a dangerous love triangle between a recent widower and his former slash future wife meaning that the main character how how who is the main character in love with in this group the main character um it's sandy uh late or girl um of uh, the, the romance novels right so in a love triangle that means you're in love with someone and that oh i'm sorry right. okay so who's, she who's the is triangle okay yeah. um it's between the um, widower that she's going to meet on the island after seeing her sister mm-hmm. and the woman who he's about to remarry because she's yeah so, she's so in that's love with the guy. Yeah. she's in love with the yeah, I mean, I haven't heard that. Yeah, she is yes, yes so she's in love with the guy he's in love with her it could it's, it, yeah it yes. could get that way but Playing a game, real. I mean, it's it's, it's involved, but <laughs> but he's getting ready to re. See, she does when she meets him. Of course, he's in the midst of trying to remarry the other woman. Uh huh. I thought it was a private island. How are there so many different unrelated people living together on this private island? Yeah, it's an island with just a fam, like family members and people they've married on it only. Like maybe less than twenty people on this island. Oh wait, so are. Are these people related to our main character in some way? Or related to the sister in some way? The sister, yes. Um, she's coming to see her sister who got injured recently. And the sister the is related romance, to the, pe- the love triangle people? The, the widower and his former future the sister is married, um The sister is married to the widower's brother. Okay. I'm just not understanding. The sister that's... <laughs> the, like, the basics of... It's, 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 a, it's a private he, island... A private yes, it is. is yeah. you, you, by yeah. that you mean it's owned by it's like not part of a a um a, 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 a well actually I'm not sure if they're technically part of the nation that they're nearest to or not. But you're saying this is owned is this owned by any of the characters that we're talking about here? Yes. Yes. It well is. it's owned by the, the father of the widower or the family of the widower. That seems, almost, that seems See, like okay. it might be relevant. Yeah. See, the um, the romance novelist, she's visiting from New York. Mm-hmm. The owl is one I just created out of nowhere. It's in the uh, North Sea, if I'm not mistaken. The North Sea, yeah. So it's off of Norwich, England. Okay? okay. So it's just something I created. The um, family that owns the island are the parents, you know, of the, or the family of the widower. So he lives in the lighthouse on the island, which is not mentioned in this, but he has a, he stays in the lighthouse. He runs the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Okay. His wife, which is, well, she's not mentioned in here, but the one, the reason why he's widowed is because it's either a murder or a suicide. And she was thrown from or jumped from the third floor of the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. And that's mysterious to begin with. And he, you know, it, so his wife dies or to commit suicide. Um, the woman is here visiting six months later, her sister who stays on the island, who's married to his brother. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the former wife who was married to him before he met the wife that killed herself. Right. Cause he left her for, he left the former wife for the younger girl who ends up dead. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's dead. Six months later, former wife comes, he, Fall, he gets back with her and like you know and all this but this is before the romance novelist comes in because the romance novelist comes in and then he's you know there's an interest with her but, but he's already promised to marry this other woman so she comes in later okay I think I see it just 
it sounds like it's actually pretty simple, but that it Maybe. took so long to explain that I'm wondering if it's as simple, like if we're just presenting it, if it's as simple as it really is. Does that make sense? Like if it's good, if it's as basic as woman goes to island, when she's on this island, mm -hmm. she falls in love with a ma married man, right? And he's in love with her too, but the a widow, widower, yeah. Because he he but, has oh, she but she's dead, but he's engaged to his ex-wife. But he's engaged to the ex-wife at this point, yeah. Okay, most people don't really do that, um, so that's a little unusual to read. Yeah, I see. I a former. I mean, it's possible, and maybe this was more common in the past, perhaps. I mean, this does remind me. Yes. This, this has a lot of. Do you know Rebecca, the the Daphne du Maurier book that there's a really popular Hitchcock movie um, that was based on? There's it was actually a recent movie, I believe, from a couple years ago. Um, yeah. It's so something Hitchcock is. Okay. This is like a gothic Hitch Hitchcockian kind of thriller. Yes, yeah. Because the beginning of it, I, I, um, the beginning, it's already been compared to Hitchcock and all this stuff. So. Sure, sure. That, that's yeah. fine. Um, so, yeah, maybe one of your comps could be like Rebecca meets. Um, maybe, it, like, is this an. Is there a lot of sex in the movie? Maybe this could be an erotic thriller. Um, so maybe they've done. Pick something like yeah. Attraction. Go ahead. Yeah, they've already done that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe there will be. It, in that case, yeah. maybe even one of your comps could be an erotic thriller. Like the, the, everyone's saying, erotic thrillers are coming back. Um, so there's definitely a mm. lot of interest, and it might be a, a, just a good comp to look look at other movies like this and um, just pull from from one of those. So I think I understand after mm. hearing you explain it now. So sorry for making you go through the whole thing. I think I, I was just it's almost so simple that okay. I was like, wait, is that? Do I am I sure that I have it right? Um, and I think that the since the the basics are so sort of fundamentally just woman is in love with married man he's in love with her the conflict is that his current fiance is mm -hmm. not, n does not want that to happen right she's trying to break them up or keep them apart because she wants him for herself is that right yeah i mean she's oblivious to all this she's just like this diva is she's kind of like a 40 something catherine hep not catherine hepburn but audrey hepburn ish type chick um, she comes in and she's like a whirlwind and um, has no idea about the romance that's brewing between her widower, future, former future husband mm -hmm. and the uh, writer that just visited. So, right. yeah. OK, I think I'm with you. She and this is sounding like I mean, there's definitely legs for a plot here. I'm just now wondering what is the specificity and like the fact that we all we know about the main character is that she's a successful romance novelist. Successful is probably not the word you want to use here because we want to, you only get one adjective and mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't really affect how she's going to be trying to accomplish her goal in the story. It's not like she's continuing to write romance novels as the movie goes on, I wouldn't guess. Um, so you might want to just find something that's going to link her more to the conflict that we'll be watching. If it's, if she's like desperate, a desperately lonely novelist or something like that, think of like what is going to be something that's going to get her into more trouble be a trait that she's struggling with or is she like does she kind of crave to create the situations that are in her books for like some kind of uh if she writes like romantic thrillers is she kind of looking to make one in real life for herself kind of thing maybe just describe your character slightly differently so that we are gonna understand oh we're watching this specific person's journey right now it just sort of sounds like this could be anyone instead of saying a successful romance novelist you might have said a gardener or a baseball player or anything else, and it doesn't sound fundamentally different to me. Do you see th what I mean there? Yeah, get it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I get it. Right, right. So maybe think in terms of what is something, how, what is a way I can describe the main character that suggests an internal journey that will interweave with this external one? And there we're going to start finding just a little more specificity. Because right now, now that I've had you explain the whole plot, I'm almost like this sounds mostly just like a description of the erotic thriller genre, which is going to be movies where the main character falls in love with someone who either they are married or, and, and that's why their affair is kind of illicit or dangerous or but for whatever reason the closer you get to them the more danger you're in so it sounds like you're doing that which is fine like that's i th that's a whole genre and you can totally do it but we're just then looking for okay what sets this apart um the setting mm -hmm. is kind of cool but we've seen island type settings before um look mm -hmm. more like um how is the main character uniquely going to tackle this problem what is going to make it extra difficult for her to do this as opposed to anyone else um, and just what would imagine the audience has seen a bunch of movies like this. How are you going to hook them and say, Oh, but you got to check out this one. See, that's the problem I was running into. That's why I was 
thrown because at first I was going to have it go a whole other different direction. Oh, really? But see, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Um. yeah, maybe think of uh, what is driving or motivating your main character. I'm going to just make a few, put a couple little just notes on here. So think of driving or motivating main character. Is it loneliness or um, just kind of uh, like does she really want to be with someone or is she cr trying to do – is she creating – a uh, scenario like one of her books that she's always you know dreaming about maybe she sees this guy she's like oh he's just like my main character from my hunky romance series or whatever i want to be with him because of that like so maybe just look for things that can t make this feel more personal and impactful for your main character because right now the stakes are pretty much only she meets a guy that she likes and if she if she doesn't if it doesn't work out with him then she'll continue to be alone and i'm guessing maybe also that the uh, the future femur, fu former slash future wife will be probably trying to murder her, um, and also probably killed the last wife. We would assume. Oh, there you go. That was am it. I, but dang. So, well, yeah, <laughs> but that's um. You got it. I mean, who who else are we gonna suspect, right? You got Like, if we're gonna do a, a mysterious thr you know, thriller drama kind of thing, just mm -hmm. realize that the audience has seen a lot of these, and they're gonna like have a snap assumption. Yeah. Oh, it's clearly the X. And so that doesn't mean you can't do it, but that means the way we get there just has to be a little more unique. But don't worry yes. about that. We're just yes. talking about log lines now. So, um, yeah, for now, um, yeah. look at picking two interesting comps. Look at what is driving or motivating your main character. We want more specificity. And um, perhaps a description that implies a compelling internal journey for her. Okay, any questions on this? Okay. Not for me. Okay, great. I, I get it. Thanks, Simone. Thank you. Why is this person here? Okay, so to everybody, um, yeah, we're always trying to find what is making this personal. Why does this have to be your main character? Why couldn't this be just anyone else? Why? So if you describe your character in one way, and remember, you can always describe your character in many different ways. If we can swap that out to something else with no effect, then you probably haven't picked a specific enough main character. Or if it, if you put some, put someone else in that scenario. And it suggests an entirely different set of games than the ones that we would have gotten if they were the first thing. Then it may be just that you just need to check that carefully. That our we, we picked this main character for a reason. This is this one person's story, and it's a story that could have only happened one specific way, one specific time, in one specific way. Okay, let's look at some more. Um, okay, doke. Let's. Uh, we have neighbors from Searching Unicorn. Are you here, Searching Unicorn? No, they left the server. They posted a log line, then left the server. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to prioritize people that are here to answer the questions, so let's do uh, Lazima. Hello. Hi, so this is Arabian Dream. Can you read this out for us? And also, what genre is this? Oh, blimey. It is <sighs> Adventure... I was to say it's an adventure. Adventure, okay. Maybe comedy. Sounds yeah, adventure. Cool. Let's say adventure because it has comedy elements. Okay. All right. Um, Go ahead. Logline. Driven mad and given temporary manifestation powers by eating a 100-year-old fruit, a bullheaded heavy equipment operator must solve an impossible maze he created, defeat the creatures within, and protect his roommates before the mango power runs out. <laughs> The mango power. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty funny. Um, let me read this again to make sure I understand. Driven mad and given... Temp <laughs> what is temporary manifestation powers? What does that mean? Well, the power that he's given gives him... As, like, he's given him power to manifest things like, immediately. Meaning what? Like he can create objects out of thin air? Yeah. Okay, I would maybe just explain spell that out a little bit more. I don't think the audience, I don't think most readers are going to know what you mean by temporary manifestation powers. So if he's like given the ability to create fruit from nothing, or I would just like spell it out a little bit. Um, so if there's going to be special rules, powers, creatures, etc., um, spell out their function for the audience. Don't assume that they know. What you mean? 
and if it's anything more than i think we know what telekinesis or telepathy means or things like that but like manifestation can mean almost anything so just to be a little clear there driven mad and given temporary powers by eating a mm -hmm. hundred year old truce i like that the a bullheaded heavy equipment operator okay must solve an impossible maze he created how can it maze be impossible if you created it Well, he created it by his with his by his subconscious while he was dreaming. This is what the driven mad, driven mad part. Like he like oh. drove him crazy. He went to sleep, drank all this stuff up, and woke up, and, and it was amazed. That was like, and he's bullheaded, which is not the impossible part. That's why it's him who created this maze because it's like he doesn't like to think a lot. So it's like you know this maze that's created from this person. Okay. He has to be able to solve. Okay, but it sounds like then you have sort of two different catalysts, don't you? Don't you? I mean, is the catalyst, is it him eating this fruit and getting these fruit powers, or is it him creating this maze, would you say? The fruit powers. The fruit powers. But how is he using the fruit powers? I guess, to no, I would say maze? the, like I would say the, the maze is the, is the result of the fruit powers. How... Are those things connected? Like, how is our main character using fruit magic to get through or solve the challenges presented by this maze? By his, because he can manifest things to help him defeat like it. It's like almost like video games. Um, it's like what did I say? It's like Ghostbusters meets um, Lucy. In a way, like he has like powers to like do stuff. <laughs> okay, it just seems like but, so many, so much is going on here. Yeah, it might be a little bit too too diffuse or too scattered. It doesn't feel like one thing is causing all these things to happen. It kind of feels like a bunch of stuff is happening at once. Um, we have a guy that eats a fruit that gives him fruit powers, and, and also the ability to create any object at all. So I wouldn't even really describe them as fruit powers personally. It sounds like just reality control that has been granted to him from a, a magic fruit um so um the fact that he then magically creates this labyrinth is kind of interesting but i think that um it's just like it feels like another story almost i i don't know this this feels like too many kind of different separate elements i think maybe you could think of a way to connect these together a little bit more and maybe something like he uh or or like they're all so, connected i can't but you have went okay I listen so, to. so if it's like um he if our main character is an architect that he picks up a magic blueprint and it gives him the ability to create structures out of nothing then he creates this maze then i'm like okay i get it it's a he you know it's the the power that he got leads to the situation that he's in and it's also going to be what he has to use to get out of it but the, you've given your character such a like um, vaguely defined sense of powers that I, I struggle to envision the key sequences of the movie. I mean, if, if the powers are he can make anything at any time, why doesn't he just make a giant shotgun and shoot through the wall of the maze? Or like, why do, he's, are we going to be watching him like... He, he's like, I'll just make a wrecking ball. Then he gets in the wrecking ball and he smashes through the walls. Like, I'm just not quite seeing what the, what the boundaries or what the walls or what the rules or the fun really are. Um, so I think there's. I mean, very I, funny, that's but, why I have to put that in the log line. I'm. I have to put that in the log line. I don't. I don't see the movie from the log line. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just thought I don't get how to put the information in because he has to. He eats the fruit. Um, first eating the fruit like any drug that anyone would take. You know, that first time you get it, it's like wow, this powerful energy. He gets woken up. And the power is not as intense as it was, and it's like slowly the high is going away. And he doesn't, he has the abilities aren't as strong as it was to just zap everything away and to just do whatever he wants. That's why he has like, he has to get to the center of the maze so he can get, go back to the site, find the fruit, eat it again to reverse everything. And why does he have to do that? Or it would just stay. Or he continues to have magic? The or... maze is like... Oh, the maze is... Why is the maze... Why does he need to solve the maze, I guess? It does... In the logline, it just says that 
he must solve it to defeat the creatures and protect his roommates, but it doesn't actually clarify why he has to do this. He has to get, that's how he has to get to the fruit. He has to go through the maze in order to get the fruit to reverse everything. To reverse what? I don't, I'm still not understanding the stakes. Or, and also you- To reverse the maze. Okay. Why would you reverse a maze? Okay, so like Ghostbusters. So you've also described the main character as driven mad, which makes me question, how are, he's, your main character is literally crazy for the whole movie? Uh, have you ever did a psychedelic drug before? <laughs> Can't admit that on video, I don't think. Um, but the, the I, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's like the way I'm under. I'm trying to understand because it's like most people have, um, and then like when you're in this state of like high, there is a maze there. So the, uh, the fact that you don't understand, I, I I'm trying to quite frankly dumb it down because <laughs> like, it's like. It's very, it's like, um, I, I don't, I just, I can't do it right. I can't explain it. Okay. So, I'll um, my, my, just so, because we yeah. have to move on to the next one, I will say my notes for this will be the elements of this don't seem quite like they're one thing is logically leading to the next thing. So maybe try to think of a way to make this feel more cohesive. We need to emphasize the urgency by saying why yeah. he has to do this. I don't understand why a maze being there is so urgent that you have to risk your life to make it go away. Um, so we want to suggest why the, why this is important that the main character has this goal. And then last, you probably don't want to describe your character as mm -hmm. being driven mad. Um, that's going to make it seem like we're watching a crazy person for two hours, which doesn't really sound uh, like it's going to have a clear arc to it. Um, <laughs> so maybe find a different way of explaining okay. that. Different wording, maybe. Okay. All right. And if you haven't seen the movie, there's a movie called okay. Dave Made a Maze, which is about a guy that makes a crazy maze and then has to I think his friends have to rescue him from it um, so just in terms of maze films <laughs> maybe check that one out okay alright thanks for this um, we're going to I think we have time to do a few more so yeah, we have 20 minutes let's um, check which other ones we have we have one from Joseph we have one from do we have more I saw some folks post some earlier Everything okay, Nacho? It looks like uh, you're testing switching the chat there. Well, just trying to move, because that, you know, that porn spammer was in your, on your video window. Oh. So I was trying to move okay. it down so it would, like, disappear. And searching oh, unicorn is back. Oh, great. Okay, cool. I'll be able to look at their um, log line as well. Hopefully they're able to unmute um, so that they can answer some questions. I'm going to go with Joseph's first, and then we'll, it will end with searching unicorn if they're able to participate. So, Joseph, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, can you read out your logline for us? Uh, current title is The Ascent. Prompts are a prospect in The Mummy, the 99 version. The so uh -huh. genre is sci-fi adventure. The logline, after their ships crash on an alien planet, an archeologist and his treasure hunter nemesis juggle carrying out their original missions while racing each other across a barren continent filled with reawakening alien technology to reach the best shot at getting off-world before their limited supplies run out. All right, thanks for this sci-fi adventure. Um, after their ships crash on an alien planet, an archaeologist and his treasure hunter nemesis juggle carrying out... The wording is a little clunky on this. I yeah. Think I, I think I can see the movie. I'm just... Juggling, carrying out your missions is, is a strange way to phrase that. Also, what are their original missions? Basically, uh, the archaeologist was sent to the planet to investigate these ruins, and the treasure hunter is sent to basically steal artifacts from the ruins while sabotaging any current archaeological expedition. Okay, and why are they racing to escape the planet then while they're still doing that? That was all. Like, their ships end up destroyed, so there's no way for them to get off planet except for this space elevator that's on a far side of the continent that they're on. But so, in that case, they basically why, have like, it sounds like they would have no ability to continue carrying out their original missions if they're, if they're now forced to escape, right? I do see where you're coming from. I thought, like, uh, 
some good bits for Act Two would be involved, like involving like the archaeologist trying to salvage the mission however he can, while also preventing the treasure hunter from carrying out his mission. I can see how the logline is a bit overworded. Right? So we're, we're doing like an Indiana Jones type of thing, right? Where so one of them is the archaeologist who's the good one, and one of them is the treasure hunter who's the bad one. This is what you're doing? Yes. Okay, and so they're both being sent to, or they're both going to this planet, the archaeologist with the intention of what, like logging the, or just like studying what's there? Pretty much, yes. Okay, and the treasure hunter has gone with the intention of looting the ruins and selling it for profit? Yep. While also removing any um, like knowledge of like the archaeological expedition, or or the former, I should say. Covering up traces of the archaeological expedition. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah. When, but they crash on the planet though. So after their ships crash on an alien planet, an archaeologist and his treasure hunter nemesis must race. Uh, I should specify. Go ahead. Um, I should specify, but the ships crash basically. Uh, the restream bot is added again. Um, oh, great. Thanks. The, uh, the ship's crash is um, basically the treasure hunter's first attempt to like wipe out the expedition is to basically just destroy the ship as it's like descending to the planet. Mm -hmm. But in the process, the archaeologist and his crew uh, destroy the treasure hunter's ship in kind. I understand. Um, I'm going to suggest taking out this part where you're saying they have to carry out their original missions just because their original missions are not really key to the plot. Their, their original missions were sort of are not... It might be something that now is on the back burner as they're just trying to survive mostly, right? Yes, and that is fair. That That is an addition I've made fairly recently. I, I th I'm thinking you should take it out. It's adding an extra layer of complication when it doesn't quite need it. So, uh, they must race we don't need to say race each other they must race across a barren continent filled with reawakening alien technology i think we talked about this before you're you're joe right you you went wide by joe before not joseph didn't you yeah oh you're joe that's right okay so we have to I go by either right okay so we talked about this before a little bit yeah i posted this on the log line chat before right didn't you describe it more as like a mad ai that is kind of in like in has some kind of control over the ruins on this planet but that's uh, something that occurs at the midpoint. Like, if we were to look at the mummy, mm -hmm. this like uh, this would be like the Emotep figure, but the greater story engine would be as if like it's the American expedition crew who are fighting against uh, like Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weiss, mm -hmm. as opposed to just more Emotep. If you understand that, oh. perfect. If you I'm follow, extremely familiar with um, the mummy franchise. Don't worry. Um, so. If you have an Emotep, you need to tell us about him. Um, just reawakening alien technology does not sound like an antagonist, and it doesn't really have the same sense of urgency that an antagonist looking for them would have. Um, so I think you need to rephrase that as they must race across a barren continent or, you know, a, a dilapidating alien cityscape or whatever, pursued by or antagonized by or whatever, you know, they're, they're opposed by this entity, this mad AI that's controlling, I'm guessing, robots to come and kill them or something? Robots and eventually the, like, the very means of escape. Okay. So the space elevator, later. Okay, so let me um, write a couple things down. So I'll say, uh, removes part about original mission. I'll say highlight antagonist. Especially for an adventure movie. I know there's two competing groups, and that's going to be the main central relationship, I'm guessing, is going to be between the archaeologist and the treasure hunter who are opposed, but they, we need to know what the external threat or force is. External threat will add more sense of urgency and feel more like a formidable opponent to face. Um, so, yeah, be more specific and, and highlight and put your antagonist forward rather than hiding them or keeping them in the back. Um, and All right. an archaeologist, and maybe just, excuse me, give us like one or two more words on main character. Um, adjective to there. suggest internal journey, trade. Just not, He's struggling with something like I'm that. just unsure what that uh, adjective would be at the moment. 
that's okay. You don't need to have a perfect log line before you start, but it should it will be, will be something that um, over the next couple of weeks that you're going to want to try to land on something. Yeah. All right. Questions about this? Uh huh. Does the story itself sound all too cluttered? Like there's too much going on? No, no, not at all. Actually, the okay. setup is actually I'm, now that we have taken out that part of they have to accomplish their original missions. I'm now now that you've removed that, I can see a clearer path through it, and it doesn't feel as if like wait, okay, so the character has multiple goals, but no, your character has one goal, which is basically escape and survive. Um, you should probably frame it more around that than around, but I need to gather the data on the ruins or whatever, because it's like, well, what if they don't, though? Who cares? They can come back later? Can't they? I mean, is it that important to just gather some data on some ruins? So I think that, yeah, framing it around this race and this survival scenario is the way to go with this, and I, th I don't think it sounds too cluttered at all. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, have, have you heard of a the other comp, the prospect? Um, I'll yeah, probably give you an under, um, a better understanding of what the movie is. I think I saw it. Did that have um, what I'm intending? Is 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 Robert Pattinson in that, or is he in another sort of space movie at the same around the same time? Uh, different space movie. Um, this one stars a uh, Pedro Pascal. And it's a guy and a girl on a planet that are trying to either they're trying to they're 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 on the planet because they're looking for. Is it treasure or is it like a mineral or something like that? Yeah, it's a, a basically a biological mineral. A mineral like, yeah, right. like only found on this moon. Yeah, I think I did see this, but it was a while ago, and I can't actually really remember it very well. But it's a yeah, that was a good comment. Okay. Yeah, it's on Hulu if you ever are interested. Oh, perfect, thank you. Okay, you just so, rewatched it, so. Um, this is this one's looking pretty good. I think you've been working on this for refining this for a while, so looking forward to finally seeing the scripts. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, because I'm like getting extremely discouraged about log lines because I am not getting it. So, like, okay, all the stuff that's in my log line right now, do I have to put all of that in there in the log line? Can things just happen without having to put it in the log line? Because I'm. Like, if I have all that stuff going on, can I just take some of that out? And it still happens in the movie, and I just don't put it in the log line? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, you can't include everything in the log line. Um, the, the, the log line is supposed to give us the gist of main character, what's standing in their way, maybe what's the central relationship, who's the antagonist, something like that. This is what they're going to be doing in Act 2, and this is their general sort of trajectory of their goal. You don't need to include any more than that. It's impossible to include everything. Okay. So yeah, don't, don't feel like it. if you didn't Maybe include you it in the log line, then it can't be in the movie. Does that make sense? Um, it There's no rule about that. You can still totally... Yeah, because that's how I was feeling. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good question, though. All I right, should perfect. probably have Thank answered you. that before. Um, okay, we have time for one more. Um, Thank you. We have... Oh, actually, I think we have... Do we have both of those users in the chat? So let me make sure. Do we have... Searching Unicorn, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Great. Okay. I think can you, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Give me one second. I noticed that um, Cash Money posted one as well. So we'll do we'll do two more before we wrap today. But let's start with searching unicorn. So um, go ahead and can you read out your log line for us? Okay. Um, my log line is: as a local drug dealer climbs the ranks of the criminal underworld, his past comes back to hunt him, hitting a little too close to home. And the title of it is called Neighbors. All right, thanks for that. So I just want to check to make sure you know there was a pretty big successful comedy called Neighbors with Seth Rogen and um, who was the other lead in, in that one? Uh, was it Rose McGowan? Someone like that. Um, th this was um, mm -hmm. like five, six years ago. So I would probably say you'll need a different title just just because within probably. 10 years. Like well, titles are not a huge deal, but if it's within 10 years, yeah. then usually you'll want to like try to find something a little different maybe you, it could even be as simple as like the yeah. neighbors or like the neighborhood just like anything yeah, like, um, kind of like that well, yeah because um i actually got the title from a, a song so like yeah it was not like intentional like you know so because the song is about um well it's by the rapper j cole i'm not sure if you ever listened to him but he talks about uh, the neighbors suspecting that he you know sells drugs okay pretty much so 
kind of got a little inspiration from that and took that idea, kind of ran with it. And yeah, that was uh, the general idea. Yes, sir. Okay. Not a big deal, but just if there's another movie with the same title, we just have to make sure that there's not. Yeah, movie. for future we'll reference. Sure, yeah. Sure. Okay. So this is uh, the genre gotcha. is crime, right? I'm guessing this is a crime drama or a crime thriller. Yes, sir. Yeah, crime drama. Yeah. Crime drama. Okay. So a couple things about this. Um, the the just idea is pretty simple. A local a drug dealer climbs the ranks of the criminal underworld. His past comes back to haunt him. It's just so vague is the problem. I just don't know what these things mean. And for a logline, you just have to yeah. be really specific. Um, so the first okay. thing is that local to what? I mean, local to my area? I'm not sure what local means. I think you might yeah. want to pick a different yeah, well, one. Just I think what you meant was... Being more specific. Yeah, I think yeah. what you were getting at was he's not like a he's not like a giant cocaine smuggler. He's like a low-level drug dealer. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I see what you mean in that case, but you're going to want to probably pick an element of his personality um, that describes or maybe something that's going to explain the tactics that he's going to be using. or Because like a movie about mm -hmm. a grieving drug dealer is very different than a movie about a hot-headed aggressive drug dealer right so just pick yeah. your adjectives to describe your main character more specifically okay um perhaps like we talked we talked about before some some trait or element that he's struggling with i'm assuming it's a man um some something that he's struggling with or something that is going to make this particularly difficult for him if he's like a disgraced drug dealer that used to be at the top and now has been you know shunted down to the bottom i can see that's a really clear extra in, like difficulty that will be make up his internal journey right because he's like now not only is it going to be difficult to re-earn the trust of all those people that i betrayed or whatever i also you know yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be extra hard for him so find something that just suggests well, what his his internal what his struggle is, is. Mm -hmm. yes he climbs the rank okay. of the criminal underworld that works fine his past comes back to haunt him i think you just need to tell us what that means so is that like his brother gets out of jail and now is trying to kill him or something you just have to tell us what it is um yeah because if you're too vague, then the uh, it, the audience just won't be grabbed. Um, the readers, imagine yeah. the readers that are reading these, they read 100 log lines a day, and they can only read three of the scripts. And so they'd have absolutely no reason to pick one that's like, when this guy gets into trouble, bad things occur. It's like, well, okay, bad stuff happens. Yeah, it's, it's a story. It, we understand that. Yeah, know. I just didn't want to give like too much away in the log lines. So that's mm -hmm. probably why it's like kind of vague. I can see why you have that instinct, but you do have to. Yeah. It's not. It's not really to. You're not going to hook us by not telling us things. You will hook us by giving yeah, us information. So, um, yeah, it, a reader of a logline will will not really be intrigued by being confused or, or not knowing. They they'd rather know. Um, so you should tell us. Yeah. So it, sh it shouldn't be like you know a guy buys a new house and there's a dark secret in it. It should be a guy buys a new house and there's a werewolf in the basement. You know what I mean? So just tell us what's what you're giving us basically. So describe the work, make yeah. more specifically. Um, and let me write this down. Uh, maybe different title and um, specific journey slash threat slash conflict. Maybe find a central relationship. Central relationships can be really useful in drama stories like this. So imagine like guy has to climb the ranks of the criminal underworld. Um, he has to team up with his estranged son or he has to team up with his, um, you know, like uh, he – his wife finds out that he's a drug dealer and she wants in on it. You see how those are completely different yeah. and much more specific stories just because we've added a central relationship to it or maybe an antagonist, maybe yeah. a central, like a rival of some kind that's going to be like, you know, his best friend is also trying to be a drug dealer but in the, the opposing gang. So now we understand that the higher yeah. that they rise up, the more the rivalry is going to heat up and cause da danger. So yeah, try to yeah. Um, just specify the journey, threat, and conflict of this. Um, think of adding a central relationship if you're struggling to find a good hook. Okay. Any questions on this? Um. Well, I'm I'm more of a a novel type of writer. Uh, I'm not really like a script type writer. Like unless you count, I don't know, being in school as an elementary school person and just like you know writing with the colon next to the the person's name or something like that but as far as like like actual script uh this is like my first venture into it so with neighbors i actually started writing it um years ago novelistically i'm not sure if that's a word but i'm gonna use it anyway no, novelistically no. <laughs> yeah okay but yes so i, I started writing like it that novel of that of the story you'd say yeah 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 it's i have a general premise of it like as far as like the conflict like uh, the conflict is mostly uh, him fighting 
uh, it's like sins of the father type of thing. So like trying not to be like his father who was also uh, a drug dealer and not follow too much like in his footsteps because his father was a, a terrible person. Okay, that's all interesting stuff. If you can find a way of like if, yeah. if the father plays a major role in the script, then you should mention. Yeah, him. he he, he does play a major role. Sure. Um, yeah. And the fact that you have okay. um, a, you've already written this one time as a book, I, I think that's okay. Um, maybe don't try like imagine that you something that people run into all the time is they try to include everything from their original version or they try to make it just like the original version when you might just have to think of this as yeah. this is a movie inspired by the book that I was working on before. So maybe just try to maybe change yeah. the character names if that helps you to okay. keep them a, a little bit separate or the location names or something like that. Um, just, yeah, you're not going to be able to do it in, the, in all the same way that you would in a book. You don't get anywhere. I've, yeah. I've been doing the opposite as you. I've been going from screenwriting into novel writing. And so I've been seeing all this, oh, wow. this, this from the other direction. You just don't have anywhere yeah. near amount this, uh, around the same amount of room to do stuff in a movie as you as you would in the book. So they need to be framed around much, much more concrete and tangible conflicts. So a guy must do this by yeah. this time is like more of a movie conflict. And a guy must generally negotiate the re troubled relationships with his different family members is like a book type conflict. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if that helps you enough, but we're, I, I will say we'll also, we're, um, we're having, we just added a brand new class on crime movies that um, is going to premiere in July. Is it July or August? I can't remember, but coming up, there will be a, a crime class if you want to check that out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for this. Yeah. Um, hopefully those tips are helpful and looking forward to seeing more from that. Yeah. I think we have time for one more. Um, we're going to do, what was the last one I saw? It was Cash Money. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? I hear you fine. Okay, so give me just one sec. So let me tell everyone because we're at the end of our class time. Um, I will stay with you and I, I will do this one more. So feel free to stick around and listen if you want. I, I'll, I'm just going to dismiss the class and say um, you, you should definitely sign up if this sounds interesting to you because we have a new um, session of this starting right now. We have new sessions for all kinds of um, our boot camps. Like we have a new pilot session starting up. Um, there it is. Yeah, 825 is when our crime class is going to be. Um, and we have a one-off class coming up. How to design a pitch deck, uh, visual elements like graphic design for a script, um, which is useful if you want to be a writer, director especially. Um, so here's a bunch of the upcoming weekday classes. Remember, you can go to scriptcamp.net and slash membership and sign up for your free trial it's two weeks free um and uh we'll take any questions you have in the text chat about the boot camp program more than happy to answer any of those you can message me or nacho if you have more questions nacho being our co-founder teaches many of the classes on the server as well so there's a bunch of links there in the chat you can click on those links to sign up for your membership or if you just plan on enrolling you can just click that little number one in that um that little poll that Nacho just posted, and you can get access to our, our private chat channels early. Um, okay, so yeah, do that if you are interested, and we'd love to see you next week. I'm at the same time, and um, you should just fill out your sketchbook and work on your logline and improve it as much as possible. And if you're if you're trying to juggle between a few different ideas, then try to settle on one by next week, if at all possible. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, go th over this one last. Um, logline and then we will wrap for today and we also have a oh, last thing for everybody if you're about to leave we also have writers groups which we have forms uh you, you can fill out if you're interested in joining or starting one so let us know about that um okay yeah let's do one more logline uh let's let me just scroll up and find it here and then go ahead cash money can you read this out for us the ballad of derek and his unwanted cult Okay, right. So a young loser creates a persona that is so magnetic he accidentally starts a cult. <laughs> is this, this is a comedy? Yeah, it's like a com. It's a dark comedy, kind of. Yeah. It, it was originally like I've read it as a sh like a ten page short, but like the idea wasn't the best because I feel like I'm a better writer now, so I'm gonna do it more as a feature. See how the idea goes. Okay, great. Um, well, if you need some insight, I, that actually happened to me. You accidentally created a cult? <laughs> I did. I never really thought of a cult. I did. Uh, oh, I thought you meant a uh, short into a feature, but that's also cool. Um, yeah, I really did. So oh, wait, wait, what did you mean? Sorry, I was... you, you actually are serious? 
I'm dead serious. I inadvertently started a cult. Okay, you should definitely message yeah. uh, Lazima after this class and find out some details about that cash money. Because that's, you got a yeah. unique source right there. I didn't that's, know. In that's interesting. I'm, I'm kind of scared. I don't know if I want to, but I'll try. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's check this out. But, you know, good, good that we have a primary source on this one. Um, okay, a young loser. I like that description. But young can mean almost anything, can't it? Can, young can mean three years old, mm -hmm. young yeah. can mean 12 years old, or 25 years old, because a young lawyer is very different than a young, I don't know, uh, student or something, right? So young is just not a great description. Um, I would say something mm -hmm. like a teenage loser. You see what I mean? Like we can, or you might you might just be able to be a little more specific with it. A geeky teenage loser, something like that, that we're like, okay, why do he, is he a drug, like a burnout druggy loser? Or is he more of, he's a loser because he doesn't have that many friends? Or is it because he's into, I don't know, model trains so yeah try to just maybe mm -hmm. uh specify a little bit maybe i should just give you some more um information i was like kind of vague with the log line because whenever i say that that's when people get intrigued so the actual like story it's more like a fight club instead of like a tyler durden he is kind of there's no like mystery he is the alter ego so it's more um like, I suppose in America it would be like a high school student. He would be like, he would be like the geeky kind of guy. He was really into Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, but he got bullied. So when he's going, what would it be called? University? Would it be college? No, college. Yeah, we don't say university. Yeah, yeah, call, yeah. V is to college. He makes an alter ego. But of course, that's not his true self. And that's when people try to like magnetize around him. And he kind of just starts a cult accidentally because of that. So he's just trying to like handle that. So it's just his alter ego that he's trying to manage and his true self. Oh, wait. So are you saying that the alter ego takes over his whole personality in some way? Or is he able to... No. No, no it's kind of like... Um, how do I best describe this? It's kind of like a persona. Like his persona is different to his actual self. It's just like an act, basically, that he does. Okay. It's not himself. So, but... I'm, I like that setup. That's a funny idea, but what's the conflict of the movie? Um, basically, to be yourself. Like he's not being himself. He's just think, he's being who he thinks people want him to be. But that's that's the theme, which is you should mm -hmm. be yourself and not who you want people to be. The conflict would be what is our main character trying to accomplish and what's standing in his way. Right now, it sounds like his life is just great. I don't quite see mm -hmm. trying to resolve a, a problem with obstacles in the way. So what is what he then he starts a cult and then he must what? Okay, so the cult kind of just gets out of hand. Like the original idea is just like it was more like a social media kind of thing. Do you know the way that like say a YouTuber, it's himself and then it's his community and then the community kind of just would do stupid shit and he kind of gets the blame for it. Sure. Like it being kind of vague, but have you ever heard of that happening? Yeah. So like you know yeah the, so it's kind of like the, the yeah or something like that mm -hmm. yeah so it's kind of like that so he gets the blame for kind of like that kind of situation I'm obviously still like struggling with the actual conflict of the movie but the idea of it is like he's at odds with his true self with his true self and who he thinks people want him to wants him to be so I'm trying to like work that into the movie at some point mm -hmm. that's obviously the thing I need to work on. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the basics of this, and if you ha have you heard of a movie called Youth in Revolt, or it's actually based on a series of movies? Mm -hmm. um, this this yeah. would definitely be one of your comps, because this is like, um, I would almost say kind of the same hook as Youth in Revolt, minus the cult, the cult thing is going to be your unique, um, the, the unique direction that you go with this, which is, it's totally fine, um, so I would maybe think of another comp that involves cults or groups like that if you can think of a, an interesting one um i will just yeah so if you're we're trying to think of what is the conflict of the film that should be really clear to us in the log line and often that is going to be because we don't have that sense of and then he must what so try to add that so it's going to be he creates a persona that is so magnetic that he accidentally starts a cult and then when the cult gets too big and too crazy he needs to what stop them he needs to find a way to dissolve the cult he needs to find a way to fake his death to get out of being its leader. Like, just tell us what is the ride that we're... You basically described up to the second act of the story. So I assume he's going to have started his cult by page 25-ish. But then I'm like, what's the rest of the movie? So we're, we're wondering, what must he then accomplish? Like, I'm, I'm with you for the setup, but then 
His goal needs to be really tangible and clear. Yeah, story of my life. Yeah, that's the second act is like my arch nemesis. I need to really just get to come to grips with the actual like conflict of the movie because in my mind, it's just kind of like the main character and then his arc. I haven't actually got like the obstacle in mind just yet. That's what the really, that, like, that's what the issue was with the original short because it was just 10, 20 pages. It's easy to wrap up with one, three, about 90 to 120 pages. I obviously need a bit more conflict. Right, so conflict slash obstacles. I think that the clear conflict that's suggested by this is just that the cult gets out of control. I mean, or he, he loses control of the cult, essentially, right? Um, so which is probably going to be... he. I'm assuming, if this is a comedy, then we kind of know how these go, that at first he enjoys the benefits of having the cult in our second act, probably, right? Where he gets to mm -hmm. use it for the good things. Being a cult leader comes with a lot of benefits. And then, very quickly, the repercussions start to pile up, too. And he starts to lose his handle on his followers and they start to do stuff that he didn't tell them to do in his name or they start to you know spray paint his face on walls downtown just to like get the word out and to try to recruit more into the cult and it sounds like it's going to be the journey of him curtailing or defeating his own cult mm -hmm. yeah and so you could even he accidentally starts a cult and must defeat it and must uh defeat them it them defeat them before XXX bad thing. I would think it could be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Questions on this? No, it's great. Thanks for taking the extra time to go over mine. No worries. And the title is really funny too. So I think that <laughs> this this does grab attention. We're we're just looking for like once once you get the reader's attention, which is tough to do. So you've done a good job with that. We just then need to say now you now that we have your attention after this you'll be able to see the movie um so we can we can definitely be hooked enough to to like lean in and listen but if we can't envision the whole thing basically up to this the middle ish at least which is the midpoint at which point we we, we kind of want to just imagine the general trajectory of your character the rest of their journey um so yeah try mm -hmm. to give us as much of that as possible and just suggest after he starts this cult now he must do x before x mm -hmm. okay Thanks for this. That's no problem. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. We're, our class is over, so we're going to um, let you all go. And if you're interested in uh, naked sex dates, then you should check out this uh, <laughs> these comments on this <laughs> from this bot. I, uh, come on, come on, guys. It says over. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, so we're getting rid of that spam. Sorry about that. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> If you are interested in signing up, please do so before next class um, and finish that log line. And we'll be here in the during the week to answer questions you have. Or if you want to work on it, you can post it in the log lines channel and we can give you some good feedback on it. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. We hope to see you really soon um, at another Script Camp class or program. Nacho, any last things to announce? Uh, yeah. So if you're interested in taking the camp, just click on the yes button in the poll. And you can get immediate access to the bootcamp channels and start preparing for the eight-week program to write your feature. If you're more interested in a TV pilot, we do have a TV pilot bootcamp starting uh, next Sunday. And if you already have a script that you need to rewrite, we do have a rewrite bootcamp, which is starting up Saturday. And that requires a sign-up form. So if you're interested in a rewrite bootcamp, you need to actually have your script ready to rewrite and to upload it. And you know, in advance because you'll be like trading feedback with the other students. All right. Thanks for that. So lots of good stuff coming up. Um, you should become a member. And if you're unlimited, you can go to all of these things and more, anything we add in the future. So thanks for coming. We hope to see you soon. Have a great rest of your night. Bye. Bye.